Hey guys, MEP Guy here, and in this video, I'm gonna show you a complete, from start to finish, how to model this entire plumbing system inside of Revit. So we're gonna go over everything. We're gonna go over the water service room. We're gonna go over the showers right here. We're gonna plumb up these water closets and urinals using some really cool techniques. I'm gonna show you how to use my carrier right here that basically gets installed automatically using routing preferences. And so it's gonna be a really fun video and I think you guys are really gonna enjoy it. So I hope you guys stay throughout the whole video so you guys can learn a ton about how to model and plumb inside of Revit. So here's the floor plan. I wanna show you guys that too. So basically I have every single system showing in this floor plan. So you can see that there's a lot going on, but it is a very clean document. And so that's what I want to show you guys in this course, how if you model using these techniques that I'm gonna show you, uh, modeling can be very easy. And the way we make modeling easy is by using custom plumbing fixtures. So we've created these plumbing fixtures specifically for modeling inside of Revit. So basically they do all the things that we want them to do and so we control everything about them. And so that's how I'm able to model so fast and efficiently inside of Revit. And so here's a sanitary and vent system, and you can see everything looks clean. And I'm gonna show you guys how I do all of this stuff very fast inside of Revit. And then I'm also going to give you guys a glimpse of how I tag everything and uh, get things to display like this inside of Revit. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and let's get started. All right, so we're gonna get things started. We're gonna to go to a new project. We're gonna browse. We're gonna open up the plumbing default template. Click open and click okay. Now we're gonna be using Revit 2020 for this example. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna set up my project correctly. So what I have right here is I have a template file. And this has all of my fixtures, some water heaters, and some of the pipe routing preferences are included right here along with some tags. So it's basically everything I need for any project that I'm gonna be modeling inside of Revit for plumbing design. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select everything that I wanna bring over. I'm gonna copy it to the clipboard and then I'm just going to paste it in right here. So I'm gonna go up to modify, paste, paste from clipboard, hit okay. And we'll just pick a location right here and click. We'll hit escape. And now all of this content is now inside of my project. So I can just simply select it all and hit delete. Now there are a couple things you wanna do for the settings, but I'm not gonna get into that right here in this video, but there are settings that I use when I model. So I'm gonna click okay here. And now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to insert a Revit model. So we're gonna link a Revit. We're gonna select this Revit model right here and click okay. And we're just gonna pin this model down just like that. And now we can start modeling our plumbing system. Now, before we do that, we need to figure out where the utilities are. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to insert again. And this time we're going to insert a PDF. So I'm gonna click the PDF button. We're gonna click on this civil utility plan. We're gonna click open, set the resolution and click okay. Now I'm gonna place this PDF, but you can't see it. So we have to make sure we go to our visibility graphics right here. And we're gonna go ahead and turn on raster images. And now that I've done that, you can see the PDF shows up in the background. So we need to make sure we move the PDF into place. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the move command and I'm gonna move it from this corner here and we're gonna move it right into this corner right there. Now I need to make sure I set the scale and I happen to know that the scale factor is 120. And so everything's looking great. We're gonna pin the PDF down and now everything looks good. And so we can go ahead and start drawing our utilities into the building. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna start with my water into the building and you can see the water is coming from the left side over here. So we're gonna start drawing some water at this location right here. So I'm gonna go up to my pipe tab. So we'll go to systems and we're gonna click pipe. Now I also have a keyboard shortcut. So I'm gonna use that and I'm just gonna start drawing standard pipe. We need to make sure we set it to the cold water system. And as you can see, I brought in my own system name right here, cold water. And so anything in capitals is coming from my template file, so I know which one to use. We're just going to guess the diameter. Let's start at maybe two inches, and we're gonna start it at negative three feet. So we'll go over here and we're gonna click, and we're drawing it below the floor. So I'm gonna click, and you're gonna see Revit's gonna tell me, hey, I can't see this pipe. So what we need to do is make sure we set our view range. So I'll do that in a second. But after this, I'm gonna go ahead and go up to three feet, and we're gonna draw our piping this way. And then we're gonna go back up to maybe nine feet, and then we'll draw off this way. We'll hit escape. 
I'm going to make sure I click on the thick lines so you guys can see everything. And now we have our water into the building. Now remember, we want to show the water line below the floor. So we need to make sure we go to our view range. And for this example, we can just go ahead and set the bottom to unlimited and the view depth to unlimited. So we can see everything below the floor. We'll hit OK. And now you can see my line shows up very nicely. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn off this PDF temporarily. So let's just go ahead and click it and right click and hide in view the category. And now the PDF has been hidden from my view. I'm going to go ahead and hide these little elevation markers as well. So we'll just hide the category. So now we have our water into our building. And so I want to put a backflow preventer to protect the water from the city's water. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to go to systems. We're going to add a pipe accessory and I want to select the correct backflow preventer. So I'm going to use, uh, let's just go ahead and use this two and a half inch RPZ. So we'll click it and then we'll just kind of hover into our pipe right here. Click. And now we've created this backflow preventer. We can go to a 3D view or a fine level of detail to really look at it. And maybe we want to open this up in a 3D view. So I'm going to select everything. And then I'm just going to click this little selection box. And that will create a 3D view of this anything that I have selected. So you can see we can also change the detail level to fine in this view and turn back on our thin lines and you can really see the backflow preventer. Now we need to make sure it's going the right way. You can see that the out symbol is this way and the in symbol is this way. So we actually need to flip this thing. So luckily Revit gives us these little flip buttons. So we're going to flip this and now you can see the ends over here and now we need to rotate it. So we're going to click this little rotate button two times and now we have our backflow preventer oriented in the correct way. So that's looking great. So let's go back to our floor plan view and we're going to go ahead and start drawing our cold water piping over this way and over across to kind of hit all of our fixtures. So to do that, we just click on the piece of pipe. We can right click, draw pipe, and we're just going to draw it straight up over here and we'll just draw it straight across over here, something like that. Now you can see that the line type has already been set and that's because I'm using this special system called cold water and that comes right from my template file. So I've already set up all the line styles that you'll need for your project. So it's really good to have this stuff already set up so that you don't have to do it every time you start a new project. I also have all these pipe tags for you guys to use as well. So when we go back to our floor plan, you can see the line types are working perfectly. If we want to change those, we would go to piping systems up here, edit type, and under graphic overrides, you can see I already have this pattern that I imported in called CW. And if we click that, you can kind of see the CW cold, uh, cold water pattern that I've imported in. You can also see that down here, I have a hot water and a hot water return pattern as well. So all that stuff is already set up if you, if you decide to get the template. So you can also see that I've preset the abbreviation as CW for cold water. So if we want to go ahead and start tagging our pipe, we go to annotate, tag by category, and we can just start tagging. Now this is not the right tag I want to use. I actually don't want a leader and I want it to display that abbreviation. Now I need to go into my tags right here and make sure that the correct pipe tag has been selected for use. So if you see right down here, pipes and pipe placeholders. Right here we're using this pipe size tag. Now that's the default tag that Revit has, but I want to use my custom one. So you can see down here I have two custom pipe tags, one that says pipe size tag. So it's all caps, so we're going to go ahead and click this one and we're going to click OK. And that sets the default to this one that actually displays the system abbreviation, which is very helpful. So that looks great. And we can also tag it right here and we can also tag it right here, but I'm not going to tag it everywhere because we don't want to go crazy. So this is looking great. Now I have my cold water all the way across my building. And so I want to start kind of connecting everything together. So we're going to actually start with the showers. So I'm going to go ahead and start adding some showers. So let's zoom in on this part of our project and let's also uh, kind of put the 3D view like we'll share uh, or split the screen with the 3D view. So we'll just drag that across here right there and it snaps and then we'll kind of move this over. So we're kind of split screening it to something like this. That looks great. So let's go ahead and start um, adding some fixtures over here. So let's go to systems plumbing fixture. And we're going to click the drop down and we're going to start typing in shower. 
Now you can see in caps, I have a shower and tub fixture. So these are showers that are public for public use. So we're gonna click and you can see I have my little shower head symbol. Now if I, don't, I want to rotate this, I hit the space bar and you can see my little fixture rotates and we're just gonna put my shower fixture right behind this one, just like that. Now you can't really see it. And the reason why you can't see it is because the, the fixture that's in the architectural file is covering it up. So how do we fix that? Well, if we go to our visibility graphics, VV, we can go down to plumbing fixtures and we can just set the transparency to 100%. So let's click that and set it to 100 and click OK. And now you can see our fixture shows up. Now we can't really see our fixture that well. Let's turn on the thick lines because the other one's kind of distracting it. So maybe we want to do set everything to halftone so we can really tell what's ours and what's the architect's. So I'm going to go to VV again. And we're going to go to Revit links and I'm going to set the architectural model. So everything in the architectural model, let's set it to a half tone in an underlay and click OK. And now you can see the architect stuff is in that faint gray color and our stuff shows up in that bold color. And that's exactly what we want. Now we didn't have to set the plumbing fixtures transparent. So I'm going to undo that real quick. So let's go back to plumbing fixtures and I'm just going to Instead of making it 100%, I'm actually going to get rid of that and hit OK. And you can see our stuff still shows up over top. All right, so we got that one shower. We need to add in uh, three more shower heads. So I'm just going to click on one of the shower heads and I'm going to use the copy command. So I have the copy up here. I also can use the keyboard shortcut C. So anytime you go to a tool, if you, you know, leave it hovered over that tool, Revit's going to show you, uh, you know, the keyboard shortcut and it's also going to show you how to use the tool. So let's go to the copy tool. Now, before I start copying, I want to make sure I check this uh, box up here and you can see there is also a choice called multiple and I want to make multiple copies. So I'm going to click that and we're just going to copy multiple times from the back of this fixture. We're going to go down to this one. We're going to copy it. We're going to click. We're going to copy this one, click, and we're going to copy this last one and click just like that. Now that's looking great. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a little fancy. So I wanna look at uh, this place in the model. So what I can do is I can also use the selection box again. So let's just select all of our shower fixtures right here and we can go up to this button up here and click it. And you can see it automatically makes this uh, view for me in 3D so I can really see all of my shower heads. So let's just use uh, maybe a setup just like this. And now we're going to use uh, one of uh, the cool commands inside of Revit. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a system. So I'm going to select all of those uh, shower heads just like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a piping system. So I'm going to click this button and now I'm going to select which system I want to start creating. So we're going to use this cold water system. We're going to click it and we're going to click OK. Now we need to select the connector we want to use. So I've already set this up basically uh, to use certain connectors on this fixture. And we're actually going to use this second one. And that's going to be the vertical connector. So I'm going to click that. And then again, we're going to select the second one for all of these fixtures. Okay. And now we've essentially created a piping system. So once we create the piping system, we can actually use Revit to generate a layout for us. So I'm going to drag this. 3D view and make it a little bigger. And let's go ahead and create a piping system. So I'm going to hit generate layout. So I'm going to click into my 3D view and hit generate layout. And now you can see Revit is kind of generating a layout for me to use for my piping. So this one looks pretty good actually. So I'm going to actually go ahead and just use this piping layout. And we're just going to click finish. And first we might want to go to our settings and make sure the pipe is correct. So you can see right now we're using this pipe type standard. That's great. And then our branch piping, we're also using pipe type standard. So that's also great. So let's just go ahead and finish the layout, hit OK. And you can see Revit has automatically created these, this pipe routing for me for my cold water system. Now we can still manipulate this. Maybe we want to bring in our piping a little bit closer to our fixture, just like this. Um, that looks great. And we can go ahead and um, use this. So now I need to connect this uh, to the main right here. So I could just literally connect it right to this point. So I can click on one of the pieces, right click and create similar. And then maybe we just connect it right here, just like that. And then we can turn on our thin lines over here and we can really examine what this piping looks like. So everything's looking great. Now let's do the same thing, but this time let's create a hot water system. 
So I'm gonna, again, select all of my plumbing fixtures. So I'm just going to highlight them all right here. Now I went ahead and accidentally selected the piping as well. So I actually need to remove that from my selection. So a handy tool is to use this filter button up here. If I click this button, I can go ahead and say, I don't wanna select the pipes and I don't wanna select the pipe fittings. So I'm gonna deselect those and click OK. And now I only have my plumbing fixtures selected. So I'm going to go ahead and again create a piping system. And this time I'm going to create a hot water system. We're going to click OK. And then we need to select the correct connector. So I'm going to use the second one again for each fixture, just like that. And now that that system has been created, we'll click into our 3D view and we're going to generate another layout. And this time it's using the hot water system. So maybe we want the hot water to be a little lower than our cold water system. So we can also set the elevation right here. So maybe I just temporarily set that to eight foot six. So I'm gonna use eight space six and we'll do the same thing for the branch, eight space six, click okay. And now you can see it dropped my piping a little bit lower and we can simply just finish this off. And now you can see Revit has automatically created this cold water system for me. So one thing I'm noticing is I don't know if my pipe types are correct. So I need to make sure it's on the right system. So I'm gonna click piping systems and you can see that the piping system is in fact cold water. And then for the hot water, I wanna make sure that this system is correct. And you can see it is correct, it says hot water. So that is looking great. Now I wanna connect this piece into maybe a hot water main. So let's actually um, go ahead and start a water heater in the water service room so we can connect all of our hot water to it. So again, I have a water heater in my template. You can see if I zoom out in the template file, you can see I have these really cool water heaters right here that are already piped up for us. And so what I can do is I can use, use these uh, pre-piped water heater to make you know things a little faster. So what I could do is I've already pasted this into my project. So I'm gonna go ahead and back to my project. I'm gonna go down to the bottom where all the groups live. I'm gonna click plus. I'm gonna click into the model groups. And you can see I have this MEP guy water heater group. I'm just gonna drag that into my view and we're just gonna click some space right here. And as you can see, all of those water heaters come into my project. Now I don't need all of them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click and we're gonna ungroup them. Now, maybe I want to use this big one right here. If I click on it, you can see it's 120 gallons. So let's go ahead and just start with that one. So I'm gonna delete the rest. And now we're gonna move this water heater right into this space right here. Now I wanna rotate this. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the rotate command up here. We're gonna move this point to the middle, just like that. And then let's just go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees. That looks great. Now we have this hot water line right here. And what we are gonna do from this line, we're gonna maybe route it to the north. I wanna make sure it's on the correct system. So you can see it's already hot water, so that looks great. So let's pull this over and let's right click and draw pipe. And I'm gonna draw all the way up to this point and all the way across to that point. That looks great. Now we might wanna make this piping a little bit bigger, so we could just tab into it and we selected all of it now. And maybe we can make this one inch. Let's just make it a little bit bigger. So that's just, this is looking great. And I also need to make sure I connect my hot or my cold water to this main right here. So we wanna make sure it's at the same elevation. Right here, it's at nine feet. So we can easily connect it right into here. We could just drag it, or we can use this cool command up here called trim extend single element. And I have a shortcut for that for TTR. So if I click this button and I click this main and I click this pipe, I will automatically get that connection to be made which is very nice. So now if I wanna move my water heater, I can easily move it. So I can actually just move it to the corner right here if I really wanted to. And maybe I could also move my uh, piping up here. If I wanted to move it over in this, this part of the project, I could easily do that because it's Revit and I can easily make adjustments as I see fit. So I can do a lot of cool things once things are all connected. And this is really what you should be focusing on when you're modeling in Revit, you wanna use content that allows you to make changes in the future. So let's uh, continue on and let's just say everything's looking good so far. Maybe I want to change the way the mains hit, hit our main piping over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make some modifications. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this piece right here. So I'm just gonna delete it and then I'm gonna use my trim command up here. So I have a shortcut for TR. So I'm gonna click that, click that and we're gonna trim those back up 
And then maybe I want my main to originate here and hit this point. So all I would have to do is delete this little fitting and then maybe I'm gonna pull this piping over and maybe we're gonna right click and draw piping and click it into there right there. Now you can see this funky situation happens right here and that's because Revit was not using the correct elevations. So we need to make sure we set our elevations as we're modeling so we can really make the right decisions. So I went ahead and turned on the shaded view so you guys can see that a little better. And I can also turn on my thick lines, but they're a little too thick. And that's because the scale is gonna choose how thick these lines look. So let's go ahead and change this scale in my 3D view. Maybe we'll make it one inch equals uh, a foot and that makes my thick lines a little nicer to see. I could also change the scale in this one, so let's change it to maybe uh, one inch as well, and now things are looking a little nicer. So let's go ahead and try that again. So I'm gonna delete all this piping, or I can just simply undo it. So let's just undo, well, I don't wanna undo the scale, so let's actually go ahead and just delete the piping right here. And then if you ever wanna get rid of a little T, if you click on it and hit the minus button, it will heal it and it will be back to a straight pipe. So again, we need to make sure we set this elevation correctly. So right here, my pipe was at eight foot six. I need to make sure my main is also at eight foot six. So maybe, uh, maybe I wanna make some more changes uh, because I don't really like the way the elevations are. So maybe I wanna bring my cold water piping up to nine foot six, and maybe I wanna bring my hot water up to nine feet. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all the piping that I wanna bring up to nine feet and click nine, and that looks great. And then I can go ahead and make this connection, draw pipe, and it will make the connection right straight into the piping. We're gonna use the TTR command to trim these together, and now we're looking great. So this is how it would look. And in the, in the plan view, you can see there's some overlapping here. And then in the 3D view though, you can see that everything's looking pretty nice. But the, sometimes we need things to look correct in the plan view as well. So we can always modify things in Revit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna modify the way the piping is routed to the shower. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and change the way the piping is routed. So I'm just gonna click on that pipe and I can literally just drag the pipe over like this and go to a new location. Now something went wrong here and that's probably because it accidentally selected the fixture, but that's okay, we're gonna just hit cancel and I'm gonna try that again. So let's just move it back and then let's move it across here. And you can see how it's selecting my fixture. If I hit the tab button, it no longer selects the fixture and everything works fine. So let's do that again with the cold water. We're gonna move it over, we're gonna hit tab, and maybe that's how I want it to look on my floor plan. That looks a little nicer. So let's go ahead and delete this little fitting right here. And we're gonna go ahead and move this back a little bit. We'll hit tab. And now we're gonna right click and draw a pipe. And maybe I'm gonna draw it right into this main right here. Now maybe I wanna connect it right here. So before I do this, maybe I want to make sure I align it to this pipe so it's nice and straight. So let's just draw it from here. And then let's use our align command and we're gonna align this piece to this piece, and then we're gonna delete this button, or this fitting, and we're gonna trim these together right here, and then we're gonna trim these together right here. And that looks great. Now we can go ahead and remove this by hitting the minus button right here, and that's looking good. And then again, maybe we want our little main here. Uh, let's go ahead and pull it over there. That's looking good. And then let's go ahead and connect the main to this piece. So we'll right click, draw a pipe, and we'll click it. And you can see again, we were at the wrong elevation. So we, we wanna make sure we set that before we make these connections. So let's go ahead and move our piping before we make that connection. So I'm just gonna hit Control Z. And let's remember, we put our piping at nine foot six right here, right here. So let's go ahead and make sure our main gets put to nine foot six. So nine space six. And then let's go ahead and right click, draw a pipe, and let's just draw it right into our main just like that. So the connection gets made. And now what we can do, we can do the same thing. This time I'm gonna drag it across and you're gonna see Revit's gonna automatically snap. Well, actually it didn't. So maybe let's delete this fitting first and then let's see if Revit will automatically snap for us. You can see now that it knows that the fitting's not there, it actually snaps. We'll hit tab and now we can just trim these together just like that and we can trim this one to this one. Now I want this layout to be consistent for all of these showers. So let's go ahead and just delete the fixtures and the piping. A lot of times in Revit, we notice that a change needed to be made 
And instead of trying to fix each one, sometimes it's just easier to start over. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna utilize this situation right here and copy it across. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete all of this work that I already did. I'm gonna hit the delete button. We're gonna delete this fixture right here. We're gonna zoom out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make these connections right here along with my fixture. So hold control. And then I don't need these little elbows right here. Or actually, maybe maybe I do want them. Maybe I want all of this piping as well. So I'm gonna hold control and we're gonna actually select all of these pieces right here. And now I'm just gonna, again, make a multiple copy across all of these shower heads. So we'll go up to our copy command, use multiple, and I'm just gonna copy from the back of the wall here to the back of this shower head here, to the back of this shower head here, and then to the back of this shower head here, just like that. And now that I have all of these copied and they're looking really good, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my trim commands. So I'm just gonna, let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can really see this. Now I'm gonna use my trim commands. So TR, I'm gonna trim this piece to this piece. We're gonna use TR again, this piece to this piece. Now I'm gonna use TTR, which was my trim extend right here. So TTR, click that to that, click that to that, click that to that, click that to that and then everything has been connected up. So now that the hot and cold water system has been drawn to these showers, let's go ahead and connect the sanitary system. So if you guys remember that PDF, we need to show that again. So I'm gonna to go to my visibility graphics. We're gonna to go to raster images. I'm gonna unhide that. And you can see my sanitary is way over here. So I'm gonna start drawing my sanitary starting from my water service room because I'm gonna need some drains in here. So I'm gonna start drawing my sanitary all the way across and maybe all the way over in this direction. Well, it will eventually come out and hit the sanitary line on the street. So for this, I'm just gonna draw without a slope because it's just gonna make my life a little bit easier. But if you guys wanna draw sloped piping, go for it. So I'm gonna to go to pipe. And I'm gonna, this time I'm gonna use this sanitary PVC DWV. Now this pipe has already been set up with all of the routing preferences that I use for my models. So you can see there's some, some caps in here, some clean outs. I have some uh, custom elbows that I've created, some P traps. So everything that I brought over from that template project gets transferred into this pipe type right here. So let's start drawing. Now we obviously need to change the system type to sanitary and again i have my own sanitary piping system called sanitary 2 and let's just start drawing some piping so i'm going to start it off right here now we want to start at we're going to use a four inch piece of pipe and let's just go ahead and start at negative two feet we'll start drawing from this direction right here we'll go off to the north part let's go ahead and click about this part right here and let's go all the way across to a point about right here, just like that. Now we can always move this later, but this is looking good for now. And so now that I have my sanitary main, I'm gonna go ahead and connect all of my showers together and then connect them to this main right here. So let's go ahead and we're gonna go into our 3D view. Now you're gonna notice that I cannot see my sanitary and that's because this selection box or section box is not deep enough to show my sanitary. So we can move that down just like this and then we have to move it over just like this. And now you can see the sanitary piping does in fact show up. So a lot of times when I'm in a 3D view, the selection box kind of gets in the way or section box. So I'm just gonna right click and hide this in the view by the category. And now I can see things a little better. So let's go ahead and create another piping system. So again, I'm gonna select all of my fixtures, make sure they're blue. We're gonna filter them and make sure we only select the plumbing fixtures. And now that they're selected, we're gonna create another piping system. This time it's gonna be called sanitary. And we're just gonna to have to make sure we select the correct sanitary system. Let's use this sanitary too. And then we just need to select the correct connector. So I happen to know that it's this first connector right here. We're gonna click okay to all of these shower heads. And let's just go ahead and generate a layout. So before I do that, I'm just gonna make the 3D view nice and big, just like this. And then we're gonna hit generate layout. Before I did that, I probably should have clicked into this 3D view. And as you can see, it's not really looking correct. You can see that it looks like the piping is actually coming up from the drain and going across. And that's not really what we want. And we want this uh, main piping over here to be on this side right here. So we have to make some adjustments. So first I'm gonna go to my settings and I'm going to change the offset to negative two. 
So I'm going to change my branch to negative two as well. Hit OK. And you can see now it drops the main below. And that looks great. But again, I need to move this main branch over to the left, right over here. So the way to do that is we click on Edit Layout. And now it gives us the opportunity to click on this pipe and actually move it right there. And then once it's moved here, we can move it across just like that. And then we need to move this piece over here as well. So let's keep moving it until it snaps. And that looks great. And so now you can see that the piping is looking pretty nice. So we'll go ahead and finish the layout. And you can see Revit draws all of my piping from the drain all the way over and across. And so if we look at it in a floor plan view, things are looking a lot better. So sometimes what we're gonna get is we're gonna get the fittings in the wrong way. So we just need to make sure that we change that so we can flip those fittings just like this. And let's click on this one. We'll flip this one as well. And one thing I'm noticing is these are not the right type of fittings, so we can change that. So we're gonna select both of them and then we're going to select the correct fitting. So we're gonna use the Y combination and that looks much better. And then we're gonna go ahead and maybe we want the piping to continue off this way and then route it over and connect to the piping right here. So if I wanna keep drawing this way, I can click on this elbow and hit the plus and then the fitting will be created. And then I'm gonna right click, draw a pipe and I'm gonna draw it off this way and then draw it off this way. And you can see that connection gets made. Now, again, I need to flip this fitting and maybe we'll change it to a combo Y and everything's looking great. So that looks good. Now I'm noticing one thing, I might want to put a vent in this location. So I'm gonna move all of this piping over here, just like that, so it's a little closer. And as you can see, I have my sanitary piping now connected to each shower drain, and now it's gonna be routed over and connect to this main right here. Now you can see it's like breaking it right here. So we need to make sure we extend our little section box. So if we click on the little light bulb right here, you can see the selection box turns in this magenta color so we can select it and kind of just move it over. You can see, now I can see that. So I like to use this little reveal hidden elements to toggle things that are hidden and things that aren't. We could do the same thing over here. If we wanna see our PDF or we don't wanna see our PDF, so like if I click and I do VV and we hide the raster images, just like that, okay, now it's gone. But if I wanna see it real quick, I can just reveal the hidden elements and it will show up. So using this command is very handy. So we're gonna turn this off, but I just wanted to show you guys that real quick. So now we have this nice sanitary. You're gonna notice that there's a uh, 90 degree angle. So anytime there's a 90 degree angle, we need to have a clean out within 40 feet. And so let's go ahead and measure this by using the measure command up here. And let's make sure the distance from here over to here is less than 40 feet, it is. So we need to make sure we put a clean out maybe somewhere over here. So what I can do is I can hit the plus right there. We have to change this to the combo again and right click, draw a pipe. And maybe we'll put our clean out over here and maybe we'll go at a 45 degree angle maybe over here. And then we need to draw the piping up. So anytime you wanna draw it up, you have to change the elevation to zero and hit apply. And you can see that Revit makes this nice 90 degree angle right here. So we're gonna add a clean out, but before we do that, I wanna make sure that all of this piping is upsized to maybe three inches. Uh, there's a couple reasons for that. Three inch piping can be sloped at an eighth of an inch. So I kinda wanna have that slope, but I also want this piping to be big enough to be able to, you know, carry any of the gunk that comes from these showers like hair and all kinds of stuff. So I want this main to be bigger. So I only want to select the main and I want to make it three inches. So how do I do that? Well, here's a little trick for you guys. If you select something in Revit, so let's say we select this piece, this fitting right here. If I go up to this point right here and hit tab, Revit's going to select everything in between this. So if I hit tab from right here, you can see that Revit will actually select everything from that point. So we'll click, and now we have a really cool selection of all this piece of piping that we wanna make three inches. So we go up to our diameter and make it three inches. Now you'll notice that there are some issues sometimes when you're you know, messing around with Revit and, and doing all kinds of things. So right here, based on my routing preferences, uh, Revit wants to draw an elbow here. So I don't really understand why, but we can go ahead and just hit say disconnect, and then we can just easily just delete that elbow and then hit the trim command and then just trim those back. So you can see um, that works out perfectly fine. 
All right, so now we have everything three inches and I wanna go ahead and put a clean out here. Now, luckily I already have pipe routing preferences. So when I click this piece of pipe, if I hit cap open ends, Revit's gonna automatically put the clean out cap that I have in my routing preferences. And the nice thing about this clean out cap that I use is it actually has a symbol inside of it. So if we click on our medium level of detail, you can see, and let me click on, make sure the lines are a little thicker. So you can see there's this nice little clean out symbol right here that really displays, you know, the clean out. So if we change this to, you know, a more realistic scale, maybe a quarter inch, you can see that Revit is making this nice clean out symbol for me along with, you know, all the different line work and uh, thicknesses that it will use when it prints. So maybe we would want to maybe make this a little cleaner so we could maybe move this piping a little over. We can move this piping a little further back and just really clean up how this uh, is going to be printed. So that's looking great. So I really like this setup. And so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start drawing the vent piping for this shower. Now this shower setup is a perfect candidate to use a circuit vent. And a circuit vent is a certain type of vent that you can use for, you know, things like showers, water closets, anything that's, you know, in a nice row like this or oriented like this can be a good candidate for a circuit vent. So we're going to head, we're going to go ahead and put a circuit vent right here. And so anytime I'm drawing vent piping, I want to draw from the ceiling and down to my piping. Now I've actually created a special system for my vents. So I'm going to go up to the pipe command. So systems pipe and we're gonna select the vent PVC, and I already have the routing preferences set for drawing vent piping, and we just need to make sure we set the system type correctly, and so we're gonna use this vent sanitary. Now this vent sanitary is a special type of uh, system, and I'm gonna talk, I will talk a lot more about that for members in my course, Plumbing 101, but for now, let's just start drawing some piping. So maybe I'm gonna start at this point right here, and I'm just gonna go across, just like this, and then we're gonna drop it down right here. So click, and you can see that pipe gets put right into that sanitary. Now you'll notice I started drawing it a little low, but that's okay. So we can just click on this piece of pipe right here, and instead of at zero, zero, I need to make sure that's up. Maybe uh, let's make it at 10 feet. So you can see the vent piping is now up to 10 feet, and we just need to make sure it's not conflicting with our other pieces of pipe. Everything's looking great. So that looks good. So we have our vent and that vent is actually the only vent we need for these showers. Basically it's a type of vent system where it only requires one vent. And that's another reason why we made this main three inches because we wanted to make it big enough so that the air could still be inside this to vent all of these fixtures. Okay. And so I go into a lot more of the detail about plumbing design in general in my course, Plumbing 101. Uh, but for this, we're really just focusing on modeling. So I have my little vent right here. Now we can, now that we have it drawn, we can basically draw it anywhere. And what make what might make some sense is maybe we want to make it, you know, at a 45 degree angle. So you can really tell the difference between the vent and the other pieces of pipe. So let's draw it at a 45 degree angle, maybe right here. So we can see that nice. And then let's just go across this way. So we'll right click, draw a pipe, and we'll just continue drawing it across this way, just like that. And so that looks really good. So we're about done with our shower layout with our hot water, cold water and our sanitary in our vent. So let's go ahead and maybe uh, tag some of these pipes so we can basically show the size of them. So let's uh, start by going to the annotate tab and we'll do tag by category. And right off the bat, it's going to use this tag right here. Now I don't want to use this tag. I actually want to use a different type of tag. So if I go to my tags button, I can select which tag I want to use. So for this, I don't want to use the pipe size tag. I want to go ahead and use this leader pipe size tag because I want a leader on these tags. So we're going to click this one. We're going to click OK. Now we're going to select leader and then I'm just going to start tagging my piece of pipe. Now I don't want to use the attached end. I'm actually going to use the free end. All right. So I'm going to tag maybe, I don't know, maybe this point right here. And then we're going to drag it over and drag it across. Now this is a custom tag that I've created. And as you can see, it's kind of working really nicely. So it, it snaps, snaps, and it just makes my life a little easier using some of this custom content. Now I'm gonna select both of them and we're just gonna kind of move them into place. Well, maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm just gonna select this one and we'll just move it in so we can kind of see it a little better. Something like that. And let's just do the same thing here. Revit will little, really snap for me and then snap it to a point right here. 
that looks pretty good. Maybe we'll move this tag up a little bit so it's a little closer to the hot water and move this up. So now we've uh, tagged those two. Now I want this same tag layout to be for all of these different tags. Now the only issue is if I start drawing another tag, I have to get it kind of perfect. So I can't really uh, make this exact layout look good. But here's a trick. If I select both of these tags and I copy them, and we're gonna copy multiple, I'm gonna copy from this location right here, and we're just gonna paste it here, paste it here, and paste it here. Now when I did that, the hot water couldn't find the host because it wasn't in the same location. Because as you remember, we moved this piece of pipe a little bit from this one. So we actually have to pick a new starting point for our copy. So I'm gonna try that again. So let's just go ahead and copy the tag. We hit the copy command, and we need to make sure we're copying it from this pipe right here. So I'm gonna click on it, and then we'll go straight over and click this piece right here, and it works perfectly. So now we might wanna move this hot water piping over so it's the same spot as the cold water. And if we zoom out, you can see that looks very nice. Everything is consistent and looking good. Now we could also uh, tag these pieces right here. And since they're a little bit longer, we can just use the regular pipe tag. So if we go to tag by category, we can just start tagging our pipe. We don't need a leader this time. So we'll just tag it just like this, just like this, and just like this. And we could use the same concept here where we could select each one, and then we could use the copy command and we're gonna copy it from this point to this point. Now again, you're gonna see that it could not find a host. So, you know, this method doesn't really work perfectly. So you're gonna to have to play around with it when it works and when it doesn't work. So I'm gonna try that one more time and let's see if it can work. Now it won't work. But what we can do is we can just hit the create similar button right here and we can just go ahead and put the tag right on top and just make it as close as we can, just like that. And now we have all of our pipes tagged. We could also do the sanitary. So if we use, so tag by category, you can actually use TG for your shortcut. And we can just tag this piece right here, maybe tag this piece right here, and this piece right here. We could also do our vent piping, but you'll notice that it's a little too close. So maybe we need to bring our vent piping a little further up, something like here. And let's go ahead and try to tag that again. Now you'll notice that my vent piping isn't showing the system name, and that's because I haven't created an abbreviation for this vent system yet. So if I go to piping systems, hit edit type, I can set the abbreviation to V. So we'll use a capital V. We'll click OK, click OK. And now you can see my vent symbol or my vent abbreviation shows up. So that's looking very good. So everything has been tagged. We could tag a little more pieces, but I'm not gonna get too much into that. We definitely wanna tag the mains up here so we can again use the TG command and maybe I'll tag this piece right here and use the tag TG command again, and we'll tag this piece right here. I even have it set up so that I can tag my pipe fittings. So this guy right here is a clean out. So I have, if I go to edit type, the type mark is FCO, so I could use that for a tag. So if I go and hit the TG command and try to tag this pipe fitting, you can see I have this already set. So it is basically reading that type mark and this uh, you know, fitting happens to have the type mark FCO for floor clean out. So there's a lot of cool things you can do inside of Revit with customization. So that was a brief introductory to how I start drawing my plumbing systems inside of Revit. And if you guys are interested in purchasing these custom plumbing fixtures, go to mepguy.com where you can do that. So now that we have all of our showers plumbed up, we're gonna go ahead and focus on the water closets and urinals in this section of the building. So the first thing I wanna do is, you know, figure out where I want my main to drop into the chase area. I'm thinking I'm gonna pick the location near the ADA stall, so that way they can put an access panel right here. So I'm just gonna start drawing some piping. I'm gonna click my main, right click and create similar. And I'm just gonna draw some piping down here and we'll go to a point about right here. That looks great, so let's go ahead and add our plumbing fixtures to the model. So to add a plumbing fixture, we're gonna to go to Systems, Plumbing Fixture, and let's just start typing Water Closet. For this one, we're gonna use the Water Closet Flush Valve Wall Mount. So we'll select this one right here, and let's just go ahead and start putting some water closets. Let's put one right here, put one right here, and just finish this off. We'll put this last one right here, but we're gonna go ahead and change this last one to an ADA type. So I'm gonna select it, and then I'm just gonna use the drop down and select the ADA version. And what that will do is it will just put the water closet a little higher up. 
Now let's go ahead and add some urinals here. So we'll go back to plumbing fixture. We'll start typing in urinal and we'll use this one right here, flush valve wall mount, and we'll just click them into place just like that. Now we'll just go ahead and place the rest of our plumbing fixtures right here. So again, we'll go back to plumbing fixture or we can select one that we've already added to the model, right click, create similar, and let's just start placing these as well. And then for the last one, we need an ADA type. So let's go ahead and select this one that has the ADA and we'll create similar again. And then we'll just put it right on the back of this fixture just like that. And that looks great. Now let's go ahead and connect all of these pipes or plumbing fixtures. So I'm gonna actually do it with these fixtures first. So let's go ahead and create a piping system. This time we're gonna start with the cold water system. Hit okay. We're gonna select the correct connector and let's go ahead and open up a 3D view. So we have this 3D view already open, so we can click on that, but I actually wanna use the selection I have to create my 3D view. So let's select all of our fixtures and maybe select our mains right here, and then we'll click on this selection box button, and it'll create a 3D view for us with our selection. Now I wanna move the section box a little bit so we don't see all the showers, so I'm gonna use the light bulb to reveal the hidden elements. I'm going to select my section box and I'm just going to pull this back. That looks great. And then we'll pull it back from here too so we can see behind the chase. And maybe we'll pull it down as well so we can see any piping that will be below the floor. That looks great. Let's close the reveal hidden elements and that's looking good. Now you can see the fixtures that I've added are over top of the architect's fixtures and that's basically because we're gonna use our fixtures for modeling and then we're gonna turn them off later. So let's go back to our floor plan view and maybe I'll put the 3D view to the right hand side so we can see it as we model. That looks good. And let's go ahead and finish creating that system. So we'll tab into all of our fixtures and the first time I hit tab, you can see it highlights as a plumbing system. We'll click on it and then we'll use the generate layout command. And the first thing you'll notice is that the water closets or the piping is gonna be going up and over. And we don't want that. We will actually want them to be going straight off this connection point right here. So we have to adjust the settings and I'm just going to make the piping go down to two feet because that's where my connector is located. And since I created these fixtures, I know exactly where the connectors are. And now you can see that looks pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and finish the layout and that looks great. Now we can back this piping into the wall just like that. And we can delete this piece right here. So we can just hit the delete button and then we can trim in a floor plan this piece to this piece. So when we do that, it will make the connection down so we don't have to do it the long way. So I'm gonna use the trim command. So if I go to modify and hit trim or TR, I'm gonna trim this to this. And you can see it, Revit's gonna drop that piping down and route it across here to hit all of my fixtures. Now I also need to make sure I connect these, so I'm gonna use this tr trim command, the trim extends single element, TTR is my shortcut. I'm gonna select this piece right here, and then this piece right here, and you can see the connection gets made. So that's looking great. Now let's go ahead and continue off in a, our water piping to our urinals. Now we might want to continue to bring the cold water piping behind the chase this way, and maybe we'll go up from here and connect it right here. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and draw it from a floor plan, and maybe we want to continue drawing from this point. So I'm gonna select this fitting right here, and then I'm gonna use the plus button to continue drawing it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my thin lines on and make sure I'm in a fine level of detail so I can really see my piping. That looks great. And now I can right click on this and draw pipe. And then once I go over to where the connector is, it should snap, but it's not snapping. So maybe we'll just go off to this direction right here. And let's go ahead and start drawing piping from our fixture. So I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna use this connector right here. So I'm gonna right click, draw a pipe, and I'm just gonna start drawing it off this way. Now we're gonna use the same technique we did before. We're gonna use the trim command in a floor plan to make this connection, which is lower, to this connection right here, which is higher. So I'm gonna use the trim command and we're gonna trim from this point to this point. And as you can see, Revit makes that connection very nice for me. Now for our next one, we're just gonna go ahead and use another tricky command or my favorite command, the connect into command. And what that will do is if I select my fixture, if I click connect into, if not, then I pick my connector, I can then pick a piece of pipe that I wanna connect into. And it really saves some time. So I'm gonna click connect into 
and then I have to make sure I select the correct connector. So I'm going to select this connector right here that's going straight into my fixture. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to select the piping right here in a floor plan. And you're going to watch in the 3D view, it'll automatically make this connection. Look at that. That looks great. So now we have all of our fixtures uh, plumbed up. Now, what we could do is we could just manually size this piping uh, based on the fixture units. But luckily, I've already provided all the fixture units for these type of fixtures per the international plumbing code. So since I have that data inside it, I can use that to quickly size my system. Now the first thing I need to do is I need to make sure the sizing is correct. So I'm gonna click on one of my pipes. I'm gonna go up to piping systems. I'm gonna to go to edit type. And I need to make sure that my system type is predominantly flush valves. So I'm gonna change this to flush valves. I'm gonna click okay. And now I'm gonna select all of my piping. So let's go ahead and use that trick we did before where we're gonna select this part right here. And then we're gonna go ahead and tab from this point right here. And you're gonna see all that piping gets highlighted. We're gonna click. And then I'm gonna also hold control and we're gonna also include in the selection these pieces right here. So now you can see all of these pieces have been highlighted. Now I wanna keep this piece one inch into my water closet because that's the connector size. So now that I have all of these pipes selected, I can use my duct pipe sizing tool and we can size it based on a velocity that we set. So let's go ahead and set the velocity to maybe eight feet per second. And we're gonna use the calculated size only and we're gonna click okay. Now you're gonna see it says the uh, sizing failed in this orange area right here, but that's okay. We're not sizing the main yet. We're gonna just size this line right here. So as you can see, it does appear that the piping got larger in this spot. So let's check on the size, uh, two inch piping right here. And that's what I would expect for four water closets with some urinals. And you can see right here, the piping is consistent. One inch, that looks good. And one inch, that looks good. So we can also maybe if our urinals were three quarter inch, we, we could also use that. So it just depends on the fixture. So we've automatically sized our piping and that looks great. So let's go ahead and continue off and let's go ahead and size all of these or connect all of these water closets over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and extend my section box right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the reveal hidden elements tool and you can see my section box shows up and I'm just gonna drag it over. That looks great. Maybe we're just gonna try to get rid of those showers right there. And then I'm just gonna drag this over so we can focus on the other side of the building, just like that. Maybe we'll drag it over a little bit more and now you can clearly see all the other water closets. So that's looking good. Let's go ahead and close the reveal hidden elements button. And that looks great. Let's go ahead and draw some piping, connect all of these fixtures. So let's go ahead and use our create the system. So let's click this button and create a piping system. We're gonna select the cold water, hit okay. And we need to make sure we select the correct connector. The first one looks great. So let's click okay for all of these right here. And now we have that system. So let's do the same thing. Let's generate another layout. And now that we have already preset the elevations, we can just go ahead and finish this off. And now it's done. And we need to make sure we back this piping into the chase. What's nice about Revit is it will automatically snap to locations for you. So you can see it snaps to the same location that we had this cold water piping, which is nice. And for this, I'm gonna put the shutoff valve over here because I'm gonna put an access panel. So again, I can start drawing piping from the ceiling up here. So I'm gonna right click and create similar because I want it to the piping to have the same elevation as this main up here. So I'm gonna click it and I'm gonna go down and you can see again, it will snap but that's okay, I can even go to a point right here, hit escape, and then again, we're going to delete this right here, and we're gonna trim this right here to here, and you can see that the connection gets made, which is really nice, and then we're gonna make sure we use our trim extend right there, and connect that. Now again, we can select all of the pipes. Here's another trick for you guys. If you need to select all of these pipes right here, I can just do a selection just like this, and that selects everything, I could also hold control and select this piece right there. And then I want to get rid of the selection of these fixtures and these pieces of pipe. So I'm gonna hold shift. And now I can do another selection box like this. And you can see that will remove it from my selection. So now I can go ahead and size these real quick. So let's take a look and make sure it gets sized correctly. So we're gonna use our duct pipe sizing tool. 
Again, we'll use eight feet per second in the calculated size only and click OK. And again, it fails the little uh, calculation here, but that's fine. And as you can see, our piping did get bigger right here and it reduces right here and it reduces one more time right here where it's only an inch and a quarter. I even think we could probably get away with one inch piping here, but you know, that's for you guys to decide based on your company standards. So that looks great. Everything is looking good. We've automatically sized our water closets. Now let's go ahead and do the sanitary. So I'm going to use the same concept for the sanitary. I'm gonna select my fixtures. And since we have this view open, let's do these first. So let's go ahead and select these guys. We're just gonna select our fixtures. We're gonna create another piping system. And this time we're gonna use the sanitary system. I'm gonna use this sanitary two because that's the custom system I have. I'm gonna click okay. And now again, we just have to select the right connector. I happen to know it's this one right here and not this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the first one each time. And now that we have the system created, we can use the generate layout command. And we have to again, change the settings. So let's go to settings. And I happen to know that the offset is at six inches above the ground. So let's go ahead and change this to six inches. We'll click okay. And as you can see, that looks good. And let's go ahead and finish this layout. That looks great. Now the cool thing is I have some custom closet carrier fittings that I like to use. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna back this piping back into the wall. Now, if we want, we can change the direction of all of these uh, combos. So if we click on one, we can use the flip button to flip the direction. So I'm gonna flip these real quick, just like that. And this one needs to continue over. So we have to use the plus button and we have to flip it. And then we can right click and draw some pipe. And we're gonna draw it off to this, this way right here. Maybe we'll go to a point right there. And then we have to uh, go below the ground. So I'm gonna go to negative two right here. And then we'll go off this direction and we'll connect it to our main just like that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move these into the chase area. So I'm gonna just select one of the pieces and move it. Now I can't get a really, oh, that actually worked pretty well. Let, let's go ahead with that. And that's looking good. Now I wanna make carriers out of these fittings right here. So luckily I have some custom carriers that I've created for this situation. So I'm gonna select all of these pieces right here. These are the combo fittings. And I'm gonna right click. Actually, I'm not gonna right click. I'm just going to select the drop down, and we're gonna use this left inlet flow to the right carrier that I created. And as you can see, we've created water closet carriers. Now we actually forgot to create the carrier right here. So what I need to do is I need to create a combo first. So let's select our elbow and we'll use the plus button to create a combo fitting just like that. And let's just go ahead and continue drawing our piping over here. Maybe we'll put a clean out at the wall right here. All we have to do is select it and I can just say cap open ends and it puts the MEP guy clean out right here, which is nice. So if we change the level of detail to medium, you can see there is in fact a little clean out cap here for, for visual or printing. So that looks nice. So let's go back to our fine level of detail and use our thin lines. And let's uh, go ahead and change this combo to a water closet carrier flow to the right. And now we have all the carriers for this water closet setup. That looks nice. So now I need to uh, create some vent piping. So luckily I've also created connectors for these carriers. Well, actually I did not create connectors for the carriers. I actually have connectors that are located within my fixture. So if I click on my fixture, you're gonna see that there's this connector right here that's going up. And that's actually the vent connection. So we're gonna click on this button and it's actually the vent right here that we're drawing. So we're gonna select our vent piping and now we're gonna draw it at maybe, I don't know, four feet, and that's looking good. We're gonna use a two inch vent, and I'm just gonna hold shift, and we're just gonna draw it all the way across over here to maybe that point. That looks good. And let's go ahead and also create a vent pipe from this fixture, and we're gonna connect it into this one. So we can use our connect into command. So let's select the fixture right here. I'm gonna use connect into. I'm gonna select my sanitary connection right here, which is my vent and I'm gonna click this pipe. And you can see the connection gets made automatically. So that's looking great. Now, one thing I'm noticing is the vent system is not showing a different color. So what we might want to do is we might want to make sure that it gets created on the correct system. So you can see it drew it on sanitary too, but I actually want it to draw it on this vent sanitary system that I've created. And what that will do is it will create this dashed system. So if I use my thick lines, 
right here, you can see that it is in fact drawing it in a different color and pattern. So I'm gonna go and show you guys, I'm gonna use my hidden line view, and you can see that it is in fact using a different color and different pattern for the vent system. So now we can kind of use the connect into commands to connect all of our fixtures to this vent piece right here. So maybe let's go back to our shaded view and let's go ahead and select this fixture. And we're just going to use our connect into this time. We're gonna select this connector and click this piece. Let's do it again. We're gonna connect into, select the connector, pick this piece, select connect into, select this connector, pick this piece. And let's do it two more times, guys. Connect into, select this. Oh, just one more time. So that's looking great. Now, one cool thing about these custom plumbing fixtures that I've created along with these carriers and vent and sanitary piping is we can actually move the sanitary piping and vent piping. So I'm gonna move the sanitary back, maybe in the back of this chase, and you can see my vent piping is no longer really matching up with my carrier anymore. So I wanna be able to move this vent piping back where it used to be. So what I've done is I've actually created a little parameter value for the distance from the fixture to the middle of the sanitary pipe. So I can actually measure this distance. So maybe I'm gonna measure it from here to here. And I can actually copy this value onto my clipboard. And then I can literally just select all of my fixtures. And there's this in-wall vent depth offset. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in for you guys and watch once I paste this value in, and I hit enter, my vent piping will now move exactly to the right location for all of these fixtures. So that's pretty cool. Now I've moved my sanitary piping a little too far back, so I need to make sure I move it back into the center of this chase. So I'm gonna use the arrow keys and kind of nudge it back into the center, something like that. And then I need to measure again, so let's, let's redo that. Let's measure from this point to this wall. Let's copy this value to the clipboard, and then let's select all of our fixtures again and we'll just paste in this value right here. So not too much work to make edits to the vent piping and the sanitary piping for wherever you need it inside of your chase. So let's go ahead and do this to the other side right here. So this might actually be a situation where I might wanna use some of the water closets that I already have modeled. And so what I could do is I could select four of the water closets as long as they're the same distance apart. So I could verify that real quick. If I use my aligned dimension, maybe I can verify that these are in fact aligned correctly. So these are three, three foot six apart. So let's see if these are three foot six apart as well. That one looks good. That one looks good. So we could go ahead and just simply paste the or copy these over to this location if we wanted to. So let's let's do that because it's you know it's good to sometimes use these tricks inside of Revit to help you save time. So I'm gonna copy all of these pieces right here and these pieces and maybe even the main right here. And then hold control and we'll select this as well. And we're just going to copy that and we're just going to move it over and paste it to this location. So before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and delete all this water piping that we created. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all the water piping to this point right here and hit delete. And now I'm gonna select those four fixtures right here we're gonna select all these and include this. We're gonna hit copy. I'm gonna go from the center of this water closet right here, and we're just gonna move this over, right over, and paste it right here. And would you look at that, that looks pretty good. So now we can, uh, let's move our section box over. So I'm gonna turn on my light bulb, and let's move the section box so we can see this other, the other water closets in the 3D view. That looks good. Let's turn the light bulb off now. And we need to make sure that we connect our piece right here. So since I aligned it from the other view, we could literally just drag this into here and make the connection. And since we sized it, you know, starting at this point over, our sizing actually should be pretty consistent. Uh, we could really, you know, size it one more time. So let's do that. I'm gonna trim these together. It looks like they're not in the same location. So I actually need to re-trim these from the floor plan. So I'm gonna delete this piece. And remember, if we do it in a floor plan, we can hit the trim command and go from this point to this point. And the trim command makes it work in a 3D view, which is nice. And then maybe we wanna resize this. So I'm gonna select this piece over here. And then I'm gonna hit control or hit tab. And we're gonna tab into this main right here. And we're gonna hold control and select. 
and we're just gonna duct pipe size it real quick to eight feet per second. And as you can see, we updated the size of this piping very quickly. So we've went ahead and we've made all of these connections. Now, one connection we did not make was the sanitary to these urinals, so we need to make sure we do that. So if we click on the urinal, there's a couple different ways to do the sanitary for the urinals. I have a connection that is right behind the fixture, and I also have one that goes straight down in the wall. So depending on which one you want to use, uh, maybe we'll do the one that goes out and across first. So let's go ahead and right click from this point and draw a pipe. And I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to show you guys how to do it from a 3D view. So I'm going to change the pipe type to my sanitary. We're going to hold shift and we're going to make that connection just like this. Now we want to continue drawing piping off this way. So we have to right click this point, draw a pipe and we'll hold shift so it goes straight. And maybe we're gonna continue drawing it all the way across here to connect to this piece right here as well. We could probably um, reduce the size of this, but this is okay for now. Now in a floor plan, we can use our trim command. So let's go to a floor plan and we can use our trim command right here, trim extend single element and click our main, click our branch and then watch Revit mess up. <laughs> so this kind of stuff is gonna happen sometimes guys. You just have to deal with it. I don't really understand what happened here, so I'm gonna undo that. And it's probably because my piping was too far. So let's go ahead and move it back this way. And now let's try the command. And look at that, it looks a lot better. Obviously we have to flip this fitting. So I'm gonna flip it and that's looking great. And so we'll do the same thing with this fixture. So maybe we could use the connect into command for this, but I happen to know that it's not gonna make the connection perfect unless I get this piece exactly aligned. So let me show you guys what I'm talking about, because I know you guys like when I show these, you know, the problems with Revit and how to fix them. So here we go, we're gonna click on our fixture, we're gonna use connect into, we're gonna select the connector, the sanitary that is going out, we're gonna click okay, and we're gonna click this piece right here. And as you can see, Revit immediately takes a right-hand turn and then drops down. But we wanted it to drop down immediately. So what we have to do, I'm going to undo that. All we have to do is we just have to make sure we align the sanitary piping exactly centered to where that connector is. So I can use my align command, and then we'll select the center right here of our fixture and select this point of our pipe, just like that. We'll hit escape. Now when we go to our 3D view and we use connect into, we select the connector that's going out, we click OK and we click our main. You'll see the connection gets made straight down into the pipe and everything looks great. Now we can reduce the size of this piece, these pieces right here. So I'm going to select all these pieces. So let's use our little trick. Let's select this guy and then we'll tab to up to this guy right here. And then let's reduce that to maybe two inches and that looks good for our urinals. Now we can move this sanitary piping down because you're gonna see that it's actually intersecting our water piping right here, so that's no good. So I actually have a parameter command on these uh, urinals. So if I select both of them, I can go to edit type and you're gonna see there is a sanitary outlet height parameter and it's at two feet. We need to reduce that to maybe, I don't know, one foot six. So let's try one foot six first and we'll hit apply. And you can see now our sanitary piping is missing our water piping. We could even drop that down a little lower, I think. So maybe we want it to be like one foot two. We'll hit apply and that looks much better. So we're gonna click okay. And then we need to make sure our vent piping comes up. So we're gonna click this fitting. We're gonna click the plus button to draw a sanitary T just like that. And then we need to make sure we start drawing some piping up from here. So we'll right click, draw pipe and we'll draw it to five feet. Well, I actually think I meant to draw it to four feet so we can make that change. So I'm going to back this down to four feet and now we're going to move this back just like that. And we're going to make this connection. Now, when I make this connection, well, I can't make this connection because our piping is not aligned correctly. So we need to make sure that we align this piece to this piece. Actually, I think it's because this system is not this system. And so the pipes are not going to connect. So we need to make sure that we put this piece right here on the vent system. Now, before you change a system to the vent system, you need to disconnect it. So here's what happens when I change this to the vent system. If I click this piece and I go down to my system type and I change it to my vent, you're going to see all of the piping changes to vent. Now, that's not what we want. We want to keep this piece down here as a sanitary piece. So let's undo that. 
And let's go ahead and back this piping up. And now let's go ahead and change this to the vent system, our vent sanitary system. And you're gonna see the vent piping gets made. So now let's try to make this connection and see if it works. Well, it doesn't look like it's working. So we need to make sure we align this piece to this piece. That way it will work. So let's go ahead and see if we can make that alignment happen. So I'm gonna delete this fitting right here. And I'm just gonna use my align command. I'm gonna use the keyboard shortcut. And I'm gonna use my thin lines. So let's turn on thin lines. And we're gonna align from this point to this point. Now let's try to make that connection. And you can see we can in fact make the connection. So Revit was being a little finicky on how close that connection was being made. So we're also gonna use our trim extend and we're gonna select our main and our branch. And hopefully we can make this connection. I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to. Oh, it looks like we can. So there's definitely some issues going on. So basically sometimes Revit's gonna do these things and you, you just have to work with it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete all these pieces right here. And we're just gonna use our trim command and see if we can trim these together and everything's looking great. So, you know, Revit's not perfect. You're gonna have to make these adjustments sometimes, but as long as you have your tools to know what to do, it shouldn't be too bad. So now we have to make the connection here. And so what we can do is we can right click this piece, draw a pipe, and let's just draw it up to four feet. Or maybe we'll do three foot six because we want it to be a little shorter than four feet. Oh wow, it automatically made that connection for me. So, you know, sometimes Revit does that and it's pretty cool. We just need to make sure that we change this to a reducing vent type and that makes the fitting look a little nicer. Now you'll notice that the fitting right here is still green. That's okay. We're not going to be printing in color, so it's not going to affect anything. So as long as this piece of pipe right here and this piece of pipe are on the vent system, it's, it's, that's totally fine. All right, so we've uh, connected all of our vents. Now we also want to extend the vent up. Sometimes you can even extend, extend the vent up from this main right here, so maybe we'll do that. So let's go ahead and click this piece and click the plus, and let's start drawing our vent piping up. So we're gonna draw a pipe. Now, I actually wanna use a different technique for this. Now, here's another uh, trick you can use. So when you're doing the vent piping, I'm gonna turn on my thick lines so you guys can see this. I'm gonna go ahead and move this main pipe over a little bit so I can actually see it. So maybe we'll move it over here. And when we're drawing our vent piping, what we can do is we can draw it from a floor plan and then connect into down here so we don't have to break our piping. So I actually need to hide this piece right here so I can see. So I'm gonna go click on it and I'm gonna use the temporary hide element button. And now you can see I can see this. So I'm gonna select my vent right here. We're gonna create similar. I'm gonna bring it up to maybe 10 feet. And what I can do is I can start drawing my vent piping from the ceiling. So we'll start maybe right here and then we'll drop it into this piece. Now you can see that there is a problem with the systems colliding and it's basically saying we might not want to do this but we're just going to ignore this warning for now and you're also going to see that this fitting right here did not really like that two inch pipe right here so we're going to go ahead and we're going to change this back to four inch and that looks great and also it did work but the vent system did not come down to this piece right here so we might still need to use our back out method right here and then now that we have it highlighted, we can change it to the vent system right there. That's looking great. And then we can just go ahead and reconnect it. So we have to change this to four inch again. So, you know, Revit's not perfect. So I do like to show these things to you guys because I know you like it. So that looks pretty good. So for this section over here, I'm just gonna do it the old fashioned way because I don't think the fancy method was working. So I'm gonna click on my fitting, hit my plus, click the fitting, right click draw a pipe and we're just going to start drawing it up to 10 feet I actually probably could make this uh, section three inches so I'm going to do that and then we'll just continue off this way and the reason I do that is because I want to make a clean out right here so uh, now that this is all correct like this we want to back this piping up a little bit we'll change it to our sanitary or our vent system the vent sanitary right here so we get the right line types and then we'll go ahead and reconnect this just like that. And we just need to make sure we update this little fitting to our four inch fitting. That looks great. So we can do the same thing over here. Maybe we'll just update this. So I'm gonna click this piece and we'll, and we'll tab into this and we'll update this to three inches as well, if I could. 
So Revit's not allowing me to update it to three inches. It's probably because it has maybe the elbow selected. That's very strange. I'm gonna go ahead and update it to three here and three here, and then let's try to update it to three here. So again, sometimes Revit's not doing what you want, but you just have to figure out the workarounds. So let's go ahead and make those clean outs in this area. So I wanna show you guys a pretty cool trick. So what we're gonna do is we're going to copy this piece of pipe right here because we know it's aligned perfectly to this piece right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit copy up here to the clipboard and we're gonna paste it aligned to the same place. So now it has pasted this pipe to the same exact spot. So now all I have to do is move it to this elevation right here. So let's just go ahead and guess that it, maybe we want it to move about three feet. And look, now it puts it exactly in the same spot about three feet. So let's move it down maybe, I don't know, two foot six. So let's do two space six to get two foot six. And now you can see it's looking a little better. Maybe we'll move it down one more. Let's move it down to two feet. And that looks perfect. Now, I just realized that the cold water is at two feet. So maybe we wanna move it down even further, maybe to one foot six. That looks pretty good. And then we can use our trim command. Now, I don't know if I have enough space to put this fitting, so I might need to actually connect it up here first and then move it down. So let's do that. So let's move it up again. Let's do two foot six. That looks good. And then we're gonna use our trim extend command right here. We'll click this pipe and click this pipe. And as you can see, it's using a vent routing preferences because that's what I set up. But we can change this to a sanitary T just like that, and then we just need to make sure that it's facing down. Okay, that looks good. And then let's bring that down as far as we can. So what we can do is we can also just drag it while well, we can't drag it, and the reason we can't drag it is because it's a 3D view and it's not gonna allow us to go up and down. So we either has to change the elevation or I have another trick for you guys. So let's go ahead and select all the piping that we want to use right here. I'm just gonna select it right here. And then let's go up to our selection box and click on it. Now I'm gonna click this right of the view cube and look, it basically cuts me a section automatically. And now what I can do is I can use my keyboard arrows and go down. So I'm just gonna hold shift and press my down arrow keys and look at that. Basically, we just cut a section without having to. Now, if I want to look at this in a 3D view, I can hold my shift again and we'll just rotate around. And look at that, that looks really nice. Now, obviously the water piping is running into this vent piping here, but that's okay because we can, basically we can minimize the size of this. So I could tab into all this vent piping and maybe I'll update the size. But again, we have to make sure we deselect this piece. So let's hold shift and let's just, well, we have to do it bit by bit again. So maybe we use two inch here. Let's see if we can do all these pieces. Yes, we can two inch here. Look at that. So, and then all we have to do is let's just back this part down. So it's at the face of the wall. Now it would be helpful if we actually were in a floor plan for this part. So what we can do is we can use the align command. So I'm going to go up to my align right here. We're going to align it to the wall. And then I'm just going to click on this piece of pipe right here. And look at that. It snaps right to the wall. Now, since we want this to be the sanitary system and not the vent system, we could just back this piping up a little bit. Now we can select the pipe, change it to our sanitary two, turns green, and then we could just connect this back. Oh, well, we couldn't do that. And that's because there was an increaser here. So here's what we have to do. Let's hit control Z to undo that. I need to delete this piece first. Okay. Now when I make the connection, it will work. So let's actually select this piece right here. We'll hold shift and we're going to rotate around. And then let's go ahead and connect these two just like that. And look at that. Now, since it had to create the fitting, it actually separates the systems. So that's just a little trick for you guys. Now I'm noticing that the water piping needs to scooch a little bit. So we could do that pretty easily. And what we could do is we could basically select this water piping right here and we can use our arrow keys or we can just actually just pull this back right there. So it's in front. And now you can see it's not intersecting our sanitary piping anymore. And so we have the proper clearances. So let's go ahead and turn off the temporary hide isolate so we can see our uh, water piping again in our floor plan. And everything's looking really good. Now, I don't think I connected these. So let's go back to our 3D view 
And if I want to basically see everything again, I could do it a couple different ways. But one way is I can select all of the things I want to see just like that and just hit this, go into this 3D view, hit this little selection box and boom, everything shows up again. So that's looking good. Now what I want to do is I want to continue my vent piping over so it connects to this one. So all I have to do is I can click on this fitting. Now a lot of times you could click the plus and then keep drawing pipe, but I actually love to use the trim extend commands. So I like to delete it right here and then I can go up to trim extend click that and click that and then click this and click this and that's just a little faster I like to model really fast in Revit so that's just kind of how I do things so this is looking really good so we need to do the same thing over on the other side which was over here and maybe we can again utilize that technique that I showed you guys a little bit ago where we just copy things over so let's go ahead and do that so let's just delete all of these pieces right here and let's just make sure that we can see them. Maybe um, this time I'm just gonna extend my section box so I can use the little light bulb. I'm gonna reveal the section box. I'm gonna move this over so I can see the rest of my water closets. Hit escape, click the light bulb, and you can see everything is nice here. Actually, I'm gonna show you guys that method again because I think it's kind of cool. So I'm gonna click this piece, remember, and then we're gonna use the copy to clipboard and we're going to paste it aligned to the same place. Now it's still selected, it's just underneath this other piece of pipe. And then we're gonna basically put it at the same elevation as this piece over here, okay? And so I don't even remember what that piece was, so I'm gonna click on it, and you can see it's at one foot eight. So I can literally just copy this to the clipboard, one foot eight, and then maybe we right click and select previous, and you can see my previous selection gets selected. And then I'll go up here and I will change the elevation. So I'll paste it in to one foot eight. And you can see my piping now jumps down to here. So now I can use my trim extend command. So let's do that. I'm going to do my trim extend. We'll click this piece and click this piece. But you can see that Revit says, hey, you can't, you can't fit the fitting here. And that's because the routing preferences are basically saying that the combo Y fitting is way too big for this location. So Unfortunately, we kind of have to do a workaround. We have to put it up to maybe like two foot six. Then we have to do the same thing. We use the trim extend command. And what we can do is we can flip this fitting, change it to a sanitary T, and then we can move this piping back down to one foot eight. So I'll paste that in. And now you can see that looks great. Let's go ahead and change the system. So I'm just going to delete this piece right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna tab into all of these pieces right here and we'll change the system. Actually, you can't change the system when you have all the piping selected for some reason. But if I select one piece, then you can see I can in fact change the system. And since they're all connected, this is how you do it. So we're gonna change it back to the sanitary system. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. I meant to change the bottom portion only. So let's actually undo all of this. I meant to disconnect this piece. There we go. And now I'm gonna make sure this gets updated to the sanitary system, just like that. And then let's go ahead and try to connect this and hopefully it will work. Look at that, that looks great. Now I think I used a two inch here. Yes, I did. So this could be a three inch pipe or two inch. It just depends on the calculations and you know the size of your vent piping and how far this vent's running. But that's really not for us to get into right now. So I could go ahead and downsize the, this piece right here. So I would basically select it, change it to two inches, and then I could select these two as well and change these to two inches. And that looks great. And so the last thing we would wanna do is make sure we align this to the wall. So I'm first just gonna bring it back a little bit so that way I know where it is over here. And then let's just go ahead and line it into the wall using a floor plan. So we use the align command, align it to this part, and then this is my pipe right here and so it, it pops it back. Now, the last thing we would wanna do is we probably need to add a clean out to the, to the top of this. So I can use my custom clean out. I'll just cap the open end, and you can see it automatically pops it into place. And then let's do it on the other spot. So we'll click it, we'll cap open ends. And all of this stuff is coming from my preset routing preferences. So everything that was in the template basically got brought over, and that's why all this stuff is working so well. It's because I've already put in the hard work to figure all this stuff out. So now we can, if we move this to a, let's say a fine or medium level of detail, you can see if I move my vent piping, 
And that's why we always move these to uh, 45 degrees is so you can see it a little better. So let's move our vent piping. You can see there is in fact a little clean out fitting right there. If we go to our th thin lines, you can see it kind of looks like a little clean out. Now we could make that clean out uh, symbol bigger, but that's just um, for you guys to figure out like what you like um, as your company standard. So let's go back to our thick lines. That's what the clean out fitting looks like. Now if I changed my scale to maybe a half inch, I was hoping it would look a little better, but that didn't really work. So anyway, that's the clean out fitting. And so you would want to obviously note that on your plans. Well, since we're in a medium level of detail, let's take a look at how the closet carriers look. And I kind of like it because it really shows the carrier and all the other piping is single line, but the carrier stays in 3D, which is kind of nice. You can really tell that they're carriers back there. So you kind of get an idea that immediately you know that these are wall hung water closets. So that is one kind of thing that I didn't mean to do it that way. But, you know, after the fact, I said, hey, that's actually kind of a nice feature. So that's one cool thing. And you can see the little clean out fitting right here it looks great. All right, so let's uh, continue things off. I might want to also uh, 45 degree this piece of vent piping just so it looks a little cleaner. So let's select it, make sure it's my vent, and let's just 45 it over here, maybe something like that. And then let's go ahead and connect everything to this vent piece over here. Make sure you guys can see all this. So I'm just going to keep extending my vent over, maybe like that. And then we could use our trim extend command to kind of trim these together. So you'll see this error message come up, and I think that's because the elevations are not set correctly. So let's go ahead and make sure that's the that's why it's happening. So anytime you see an error, always make sure you check your elevations of your piping. So this pipe right here is set to 10 feet, and then this one is set to obviously not exactly 10 feet. So let's go ahead and set it to 10 feet. So we'll just click into the bar up here and set it to 10. And now when we use our trim extend command, everything should look perfect. There you go and we could trim this one as well. There's also another way you could show this. Maybe this is a little cleaner. I might show it at 45 degrees like this and then right click and draw a pipe and then show it going into this piece. Now we again need to make sure this is set to 10 feet. So we'll set it to 10 feet right here. We'll right click, draw a pipe, and then we'll just tee it into this. So that looks a little cleaner and I kind of like that a little better. So I'm gonna do that for this one as well. So. All I have to do to undo this is I can just drag it back. Maybe we'll go to 45 degrees, just like that. And then I can click on this fitting and just click the minus button. And then the fitting goes away. All right. So I'm very meticulous when it comes to my drafting and design. So I want this to be in the same location in this area over here. So you can always utilize your copy commands to get that to work. So I'll click on this piece right here. I'll click on copy and I'm just going to go ahead and copy from any point along this green pipe and we'll go here and you can see that now I'm in the exact same position on this side and then I can just trim them together. So we'll just trim this piece to this piece and then we'll use our trim extend command this piece to this piece and that looks really cool. Now I'm probably going to put the vent through the roof in this location right here because I want it to be close to these water closets. The IPC basically gives you a 40 foot rule and if you go over 40 feet you kind of have to start upsizing your vent piping. So uh, I talk a little bit more about that in Plumbing 101. It's more for you know plumbing design and this, this uh, video right here is mostly just for modeling itself. So I feel like everything's looking really good. Let's just zoom out on our 3D view. And let's just take a look at everything. I think that looks really good. Now, the last thing I might want to do is I might want to make sure that my water piping is consistent between these two sides. I'm looking in this location. I'm pretty sure that this is, yeah, a conflict. So I'm going to go ahead and move this water piping a little closer. And so what I want to do again is I want to get it in the same spot as the left side over here. So I can simply just use my align command up here and we'll select this water piping on the left side. And then we'll click our water piping on the right side and everything gets uh, aligned to the same location. So we're consistent and everything is looking great. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start plumbing up these lavatories. So now we're going to focus on plumbing up these lavatories. So I have a bunch of different techniques that I want to show you guys and whatever one you guys like best you can use in your projects. So the first thing we need to do is we need to place our lavatories. So we go to systems, plumbing fixture, and then we can use the drop down and start typing in lavatory. 
As you can see, I have two different types. Let's use the wall mount ADA. And all I have to do is go to the back of the fixture and it will snap. And I always want to go to the back in the wall. Use the space bar to rotate the fixture until it gets to the right spot and then I can just click. And now my cursor still has the plumbing fixture command loaded, so I can simply just keep placing these in multiple locations. So I'm just gonna go across and we're just gonna place all of them, and they snap just like that, so everything's looking great. Let's place three more. One, two, ah, I missed that one. So let's delete it, and let's create similar. I'll show you guys again. We're gonna hit spacebar, 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 and rotate it around and place it, and we'll hit escape. So now we have our lavatories placed. Now I wanna get a nice 3D view. So remember our technique, we're going to select all of our fixtures. We might wanna select some piping over here and maybe some piping up here so we can get a nice section using our selection box. So let's go to our 3D view. We'll click on the selection box. And since we have those lavatories and these pipes selected, it'll make a nice section for us to work in. So this looks great, so now we can start to work. Now if I need to pull my section a little farther back this way, because I want piping to be behind these lavatories, I can use the light bulb, and we'll pull our section box back, so we make sure we can get the backs of these lavatories. Then I'll click it again, and now we're back. So these fixtures are pretty cool, and there's a bunch of different ways you can plumb up the lavatories. I'm gonna show you a bunch of different techniques. So if we click on one of the lavatories, you're gonna see there's a ton of connectors here. So the first one we're gonna use is we're gonna do it right from the middle of the drain. So if I rotate up, you can see right here where the drain would be. And you can, you know, adjust this to make it exactly, but you know, in the middle is gonna to be totally fine for most of our modeling. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click this little button to create pipe. And the first thing you wanna do is you need to go down first. And the only way to go down in a 3D view is to set the elevation. So let's set the elevation to something that we can work in. So we're already at two foot two, so maybe I wanna drop down to maybe one foot six. So I do one space six, hit enter, and now I'm at one space six, or one foot six. Now I'm gonna rotate back up so you guys can kinda of see what I'm doing. And now I wanna go into the wall, so I can hold shift and go into the wall just like this. So that's looking good. So I'm just gonna go to a point about right here and hit escape. Now it drew it on the vent system, so I need to make sure I change that. And all I have to do is go down to system type and make sure I set it to sanitary two. I'm gonna actually go ahead and delete the sanitary one and change the name. So that way we don't have two sanitary systems in our project. So I'm gonna do is uh, delete this one. And then I'm just gonna change the name of Sanitary 2 to Sanitary. And really, that's all I need. Now, I can't delete the vent system, unfortunately, because you, can, you have to have one of each system. I'll explain that kind of stuff at a later time. All right, so we have our pipe right here. Now, I'm already noticing it's not the right pipe type, so if I wanna change the pipe type, I can tab into all of my pipe, go up here to Change Type, and then we need to select our Sanitary PVC. It's going to give us an error saying, hey, there's an open end on this pipe, but we know that, so it's totally fine. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna click on my fixture, and we're gonna utilize some of these other connectors that I have right here. You can see I have one right here for the sanitary going down, so we're gonna use this one. We're gonna create pipe again, and then we wanna make sure we're on our correct pipe type and make sure the system type is correct as well. For some reason, it's not allowing me to be on the sanitary when I click this. And so I don't think I can change it right here, unfortunately. So we're just gonna have to draw this on the vent system going forward. All right, so let's drop this down to down here so we could connect to this pipe and we're gonna go down negative two. Now, here's let me, let me do it the hard way first and show you even simplified way. So we're gonna make this negative two and hit apply. And you can see that it drops us down and then we can hold shift and go off this way because we're gonna eventually make our connection to this main right here. So I have that cool little uh, piping right here and then I could change the system type to sanitary. Now I wanna show you guys an even quicker method to make this connection. If I know I'm already gonna make the connection to the main, why don't I just use my favorite command, connect into? So I'm gonna tab all of that and we're gonna delete it. And then I'm gonna click on my fixture, use connect into, and make sure I select the correct sanitary, which is this one going down, hit okay. And then I'm gonna select the main and would you look at that, it automatically makes that connection for me without me having to do really much work. And it puts in the correct type of fitting. So that looks great. 
Now the next thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead and we're just going to move this down a little bit, okay? And then we're going to trim these together. So I'm going to use my trim command TR and I'm going to trim these together just like that. Then I'm going to click on this elbow fitting, hit this plus to make a nice T for me and I'm done. Now here's the trick. Right now, if I click on this pipe, you're going to see that there is no fixture units associated. Now there is fixture units assigned to this connector right here. So if I click on this connector right here, you can see there's a fixture unit of one. So that's great because that's what we want for a lavatory. But what about when we get here? It looks like something's wrong. The reason why is because there's a hole here. Okay. Revit cannot calculate the fixture units if there is an open pipe. So to, to get rid of that, all I have to do is use my pipe cap. Now, all I have to do is click on cap open ends and an invisible cap will be right there. Now you can't see it, but it's definitely there. And it's basically in my routing preferences. So now if I click on this pipe, you're gonna see I have one fixture unit. So let's kind of investigate what the heck just happened there. So I actually capped this with what's called an invisible cap. So if you go down to my pipe fittings right here, you can see there's this invisible cap. And all that is, if I click on it and hit edit, it is simply a pipe cap that can cap the open end of a pipe, but this thing right here is set to invisible. So you can see right here, I've turned it off, so that way it doesn't show up in our model because we don't need to see it. So let me get out of that. So now we have this nice capped pipe and it's reading my fixture units. Now we wanna draw the vent piping up. So I click on my fixture, I click on this button, and this is my sanitary vent. So we're going to go up to maybe, I don't know, 10 feet for now, just like that. And we'll go across and click. And you can see it drew it on the correct vent system. So everything's looking great. Now, remember, we did have vent piping over here. So why don't we utilize that? And maybe again, we could use our connect into button. So you can see the vent piping right here. So let's go ahead and utilize that. Now, I can't see it in my view. So again, we have to click the light bulb and then we have to drag out our section box. And now we can see all of the vent piping. We'll turn our light bulb off. And I want to do connect into and make this connection up here. So instead of having to draw it like I just did, all I have to do is tab into all this vent piping, hit delete. And now I'm going to utilize my favorite command, connect into, just like this. Make sure we select this second sanitary connector, which is pointing up. We'll hit OK. And then we'll simply connect it to the piping that is up here. Now I think I clicked on the wrong piece. I think I needed to click up here. So let me cancel that and do it again. So I'm gonna click on this fixture. I'm gonna use connect into, and let's this time let's go ahead and try to connect to this piece. And you can see it will make that connection. So obviously you have to know which section of piping you're using to make the connection work. And I accidentally selected this one because it was kind of hard to see which one was uh, right in front of the fixture. But now that we, you can clearly kind of see that after we rotate, we can use the connect into command and connect it all up. So that's looking great. So this lavatory fixture is done. And the cool thing about using this connector for the vent piping is if I click on it, it actually is utilizing the fixture units. So it's counting up all of my fixture units so I could use those for calculations if I need to. So now that I have one done, here's another thing I could do. I could literally just copy this to this next location. Okay, so I don't want to have to route all that piping again because it looks nice. Why don't I just go ahead and copy this over to this one and call it a day. Um, there's a few more things I want to do before I do that though. So one thing I definitely want to do is I want to create a P-trap here. Now all we have to do for P-traps is select the drop down here and change it to the small P-trap, two inch and smaller, and you can see a nice P-trap will show up. Now the cool thing about the small P-trap is if I go to my plumbing view, you can see there's a little P-trap symbol sitting right in the center of this lavatory. And that is very, uh, that's really cool I think because it uh, makes it clear that there's a P-trap under there and it just looks really nice. So uh, if you've ever tried to get P-traps to work on your drawings, uh, my custom P-traps, the MEP guy ones, uh, definitely work very well. So I spent a lot of time on making sure all these routing preferences uh, really worked for you guys. So we have all that and maybe we wanna just go ahead and copy it over to the next one. So let's go to our floor plan. And again, I wanna drag my 3D view over make sure I'm working in a, an efficient manner. And so all I need to do is select all of this piping right here. So maybe we'll select this piece. Let's select all of these pieces, I guess. And then let's also 
hold control and select all of these pieces and maybe lastly this piece right here. And now that we have everything selected, we can click into our floor plan view and I can just simply copy it from this point to this point. So we'll hit copy, we'll go from that point to that point and that looks great. Now you see there's a warning here. It's saying there are multiple or identical instances in the same place. Now what that means is we actually put another lavatory fixture right on top of the other one. So Revit's gonna tell you, hey, make sure you don't do this because Revit's gonna count that fixture. So we don't wanna do it like that. So I'm gonna undo that. And I wanna make sure I delete this first before I make the copy, okay? Now I can right click and select previous. Oh, and that's only gonna select my P-trap, I guess. So maybe we tab into this section of piping and then we tab into this section and then hold control and select both of those. And then I hold control again and select all of my lavatory stuff. We'll click it back into the floor plan and we'll move it or copy it, sorry, from this point to this point. And now Revit doesn't yell at me. So we know we're doing things right. Now for the last one, I wanna show you guys a different technique for connecting all this stuff. So again, we can utilize our connect into commands. So we'll click on the fixture. We'll say connect into, and we wanna select the back of the fixture sanitary first. So we'll hit that and then we're going to connect it into this piece. Again, we probably need to make sure we are connecting to the right spot. So we'll hit cancel and then let me just rotate around. Yeah, it actually looks like a fitting right here might not be in a good spot. So we actually have to move this piping over. So I probably want to do that in a floor plan. So let's just show you how you guys would do that. I would probably just back this up a little bit just like that. I can click on this piece. Let me uh, do a fine level of detail for you guys so you can really see all this stuff. I want to get rid of this one now. We'll hit the minus button. And then I want to make a more long, a longer 45 so I give myself enough space to connect this pipe. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to right click, draw a pipe, and we'll go ahead and draw it at 45 degrees. And we'll make a nice connection there. Now I can use my connect into command. Let's rotate around, connect into. And we'll select this sanitary connector and click this piece and everything works. So you can see we had a conflict with the type of uh, fittings in their space. So this is looking good. I need to make sure I connect that guy. So I use the TTR command, trim extend. And then I need to make the connection from the bottom of the fixture to this piece right here. So why don't I again use my connect into command so I can select my fixture, click connect into, and I'm going to select this this one which is in the middle hit OK and now I can try to connect into this piece and you can see it didn't work and the reason why is we're gonna undo that I need to make sure I back this down first once I back that pipe down then I can use connect into again we'll select this sanitary connector and click this and now it works okay so that's just a little trick now I have to drop this piping down so the easiest way to do that is by selecting it and going up here and we'll type in one foot six, and then it jumps down to one foot six. We'll make sure we change this to a T, and now we have to cap the open end. And the reason why it's using that type of cap for this two inch piping is because it's in my routing preferences. So if I select one of my two inch pipes and hit edit type, we're gonna hit edit on the routing preferences, and we're gonna take a look down at the caps. You can see I have two routing preferences for my caps. I have one at three inch and that's using this sanitary clean out that we've been using the whole time. And that's from for three inch piping to 12 inch piping. And then you can see I have this little invisible cap and that is from half inch to two inch. So it's actually using these routing preferences to put this invisible cap. So I just need to be aware of that. So I'm gonna hit okay, hit okay. And since I have that routing preference, when I hit cap open ends, which I already did, it will create the invisible cap that we cannot even see. So that's looking good. Then we can click on the fixture, click on this sanitary to create some pipe. And this connector is for my vent piping. So I wanna probably make sure I'm using vent PVC first. And again, I have to go up. So let's just go up first, 10 feet. Oh, that didn't work. So maybe we'll just uh, use our connect into button. So let's go ahead and click on our fixture and we'll rotate and we'll make sure we know which uh, pipe to select. So it's this one right here. I'll use connect into, select my second sanitary connector right there, and click on this piece. Looks like I hit the wrong one. Let's try it one more time. We'll click it, connect into, click on the second sanitary, and it's this piece right here. Oh, oh, 
again, we have a conflict. So you can see that this piece right here was in conflict. So when I'm coming up, I'm actually going in this location. So I need to make sure I move this. So I wanna see if I can move it in a 3D view. So I'm gonna move it slowly over. That looks great. And then we'll try it again, last time. Connect into, click our second sanitary, and it worked. So you just need to make sure you kind of understand some of the warnings that Revit's going to give you so that way you don't get too frustrated. So watching me model uh, should help you guys kind of, you know, navigate some of the more complex challenges in Revit. And I'm going to have a lot more videos where I'm actually just modeling on projects. Uh, let me know in the comments uh, what you guys want to see me model. Uh, anything from apartments to houses. Uh, I can pretty much do anything. Uh, so just let me know, guys, and I will get it to you. So let's just continue on. Now, you're noticing something that I don't have any of the water connections, so I need to start those as well. So let's go ahead and maybe we'll use our automatic routing again. So let's actually select all three of these lavatories. And we're going to create a piping system. So I'm going to click on piping up here. And let's go ahead. That's fine. Let's start with the hot water. And we just need to make sure we select the correct connector. So the first one looks pretty good. And now we have the system so we can generate the layout. And we'll just uh, finish it off right here. But remember, we always want to look in a 3D view. So I actually want the water connection point to be about maybe one foot. So we're gonna have it about right there. And then we'll go up and hit the fixture. So we need to go to settings and we'll change this to one foot. Change the branch to one foot, hit okay. And now that's looking pretty cool. So let's go ahead and use that layout. We'll finish it off. And then, like we always do, we'll back it into the wall. Maybe we'll do the center of the wall. Oops, Revit's gonna say, hey, I don't have enough room, buddy, so you're gonna have to do something. So we're gonna hit cancel. And let's go ahead and maybe not drag it right to the wall. Let's maybe go to the back of the wall. And that'll work fine. And now we can go ahead and make our fine adjustment. So anytime you wanna do a fine adjustment, you just have to zoom in. Revit's gonna snap based on how far you're zoomed in. So if we go way in, and we can even use our thin lines for this one to really see things. And then what we wanna do is we can either drag it, so we can drag our pipe closer, and you can see that it's intersecting this pipe. So we went a little too far. So maybe about right here. And it's barely missing this probably. And that looks perfect. So, you know, maybe that's how they would actually construct it in the real world. Now, I actually think what they would probably do is they'd probably go straight off over and down. So it's up to you if you want to leave it like this or actually do it like they do in the field. I tend to want to make everything look conducive to how they construct things. So I'm actually going to, you know, fix this up a little bit. So I'm going to select this piece right here, hold control, hold control, and we're going to delete that section right here. Now I'm going to delete these little pieces and we're going to actually trim those together. Now we need to be in a floor plan view, so we're gonna go zoom in on this. We're gonna hit the trim command, and let's just trim those together, and that's actually how it's gonna look in the real world. Now, I wanna copy this one over to my next lavatory, but you can see I already have piping there, so I need to make sure I delete that piping before I copy it over. So maybe I just delete that piece, delete that piece. You know, I actually think it might be easier to just redo the method, but we'll do the copy first. So a lot of times I try to, while I'm modeling, find the fastest way to do a job. So let's go ahead and copy all that stuff and we'll deselect this fitting right here. I just happen to know it's this T right here or elbow. And let's go ahead and copy that over. So we'll hit the copy command. We'll go from the front of the lab to the back of the lab. Now you can see I have this right here. And so now I can click on this piece and I'll just move it back and move it forward again and it'll make that connection. And then for this, I can use my TTR command or trim extend and that looks great. So as we made that connection to this piece right here, we did it pretty slowly and I wanna make sure that connection got made. Now the easiest way to do that would be to click on the pipe and make sure that the flow properties are running through it. So we can go down here and you can see there is in fact three GPM that is running through that. Now this three GPM comes from the amount of fixture units it's using. Uh, these were made way back in the day. So uh, a lavatory should probably be a lot less than one fixture unit, but I'll talk about that kind of stuff in uh, different kinds of courses. So 
we got that connection made. That looks great. And maybe we'll do that for the last one. Now I'm realizing I can just probably just use, uh, you know, we'll delete these pieces right here. And then we'll use again that method where we trimmed it from the floor plan and just hit TR and trim those together. So that's looking great. So I have this nice uh, layout for my water piping or my hot water piping, but I want to maybe do the same thing with my cold water piping. So I wonder if I can just go ahead and copy this piping and shift it over and use it for my cold water. So let's give that a shot. So I'm going to select all of my hot water piping by tabbing into it. So we'll tab all of this just like that. And now we're going to go ahead and copy it from this side to this side. So we'll hit our copy command. We'll go from this to this point right here. That looks great. And now we need to select all of these pipes right here, or maybe I'll just select one of them, change the system to the domestic cold water or cold water up here. That looks great. And now maybe I need to select this long cold water line so that way I can bring it a little further back. So I have one selected here. I'll click back into a floor plan. And now you can see I can use my arrow keys. So let's zoom in on a couple of these fixtures. I can use my arrow keys to kind of nudge the cold water line forward. Now maybe I want it to be separated kind of like this. And now I'm going to select both of them. And I can kind of use my arrow keys to maybe nudge it into the back of this wall. Just like this. And I just basically want it so both of the pipes are behind this pipe right here. So I'm just going to zoom in real close. And we're just going to move our cold water pipe out of that location. That's just a cool little way to quickly run your cold water lines. Now I did not make sure they were connected so I need to do that. We can again use our analyze tab and show disconnects for pipe to just double check it. And as you can see the point right here there is no warning and so that one looks good. Again the point here no warning and then over here on my hot water no warning at that point and then same thing here. So we're all connected up. This looks great. Now we need to make sure we run our mains to the ceiling. So let's go to the floor plan. I'm going to turn on the thick lines again for you guys so you can see them. And maybe we'll do the medium level of detail so you guys can kind of get an idea of how this might look on a, on a floor plan drawing. So that's looking good. We'll turn our disconnects warnings off. And now I just want to continue modeling this way. So I'm going to click on one of them, click the plus. And we'll keep drawing some pipe off to this direction. We'll hold shift. And then we're going to want to connect into the main there. So I'm just going to do, you know, hit escape. And then we'll continue. We'll draw our hot water. We'll hit the plus And continue off this by, way by drawing pipe. Hold shift. Draw off that way. And then from a floor plan, we want to make sure we make these connections. So I'm going to get rid of this little cap here that I had temporarily for my calculations. And all I have to do is drag this over and it will all automatically snap to that hot water. And then if you right click, draw pipe, I can literally drop it right down to that location. So let's continue on. We need to make sure we keep drawing our hot water piping this way. So I'm just making new fittings, drawing pipe, you know, simple stuff. All right. So the next thing we need to do is connect the cold water. Now I can't really see what's going on here. So what I could do is I could change the scale temporarily. So now I can really see what I'm doing. So I can go up here and click on this piece, right click, create similar, and then I'm going to hover into that cold water area. You can see I can make the connection automatically and look at that. Now, one thing is when I create similar from this giant piece up here, it's going to you know, continue drawing the same size, which is a two inch, I believe. So we don't want this kind of situation where it does this. So we simply just uh, tab into everything just like that. And we can set this to a half an inch and that looks good. And we could do the same thing for the cold or hot water. So we'll tab into everything, set it back to half inch and that's looking great. So now we have our little hot and cold water going down to our fixtures and everything's looking really good. So we have a three uh, way setup right here. We could do, you know, the same thing we've been doing by just literally copying everything over to this location. So we could do that. So let's go ahead and just delete these fixtures and we'll just copy everything over here. So I'm going to use a crossing selection and it gets everything for the most part. We'll just copy it to 
this point maybe, or maybe right here at the end of the lavatory to this end, and bam, we are essentially done. So we just need to trim everything together. So let me turn on the, first let's reduce the scale so you guys can see this a little better. And we'll just trim everything together. So I'll use my TTR command, and we'll trim this to this, this to this, this to this. Here's a little uh, cool command that I don't use too much, but it is kind of fun. Instead of doing it like that one at a time, you can also use another trim command. So we're gonna go up to modify. This one is the trim extend multiple. And so if I hit TTT on the keyboard, I will activate this command. And so all you do is you select your place you're going, and then you can use a crossing selection for all three of these, and they should connect just like that. So that's kind of a cool little trick. I mean, you know, it's not gonna save you a ton of time, but if you have a hundred of these, obviously that's something you wanna look into. Let's go ahead and use our trim commands for these pieces right here. I'll just use TTR and trim that to that, and we'll trim that to that. And now we are essentially done. And so we automatically just did basically both sides. I gotta make sure I connect these sanitaries down here so we can do it in the 3D view. We can use our trim extend command, TTR, click this to this, this to this, and this to this. You can see the all three got made. Let's go ahead and show you the little uh, fun command though. So we'll go back to our floor floor plan or let's hit control Z, control Z, control Z, and let's do it the, you know, the fun way. So all we have to do is use that trim extend. So I wanna go ahead and temporarily hide these pieces right here. So I'll go down to the sunglasses and hit hide element. And now I'm gonna use that trim extend multiple command up here and we'll select where we're going and use a crossing selection. And look at that. You can basically connect all three of those in one fell swoop. So kind of cool stuff. We have all of these uh, routed like this. Maybe we would just run a, you know, one single line through here so we can make that change. So that's what's cool about Revit when you're modeling uh, like this in 3D is you can really see and take advantage of design decisions as you're going. So that's one of the cool things that I love. So let's uh, go ahead and remove the temporary hides. So now we're gonna basically start to focus down here on these two individual bathrooms or toilet rooms as we call them. And so I'm gonna go ahead and start plumbing these guys up. And then after that, I'm gonna show you a really cool technique where we're gonna mirror or rotate all this stuff over here and make some connections. So that should be pretty fun too. So next we're gonna plumb up these one person toilet rooms. So I'm gonna really try to utilize my connect into commands for these. I'll show you guys a bunch of different techniques to make this work really fast. So I'm gonna go up to system, plumbing fixture, and let's again add our lavatory wall mount, add one here, add one here. And then as we're in the plumbing fixture command, we'll start typing in water closet. This time we're gonna use a flesh valve floor mount, or we could go ahead and use the tank since you guys haven't seen the tank type. So we'll use the ADA type. So it's a little higher up. We'll just place it on the back of that fixture, place it on the back of this one. And another thing, uh, the fixtures that I'm using do not host to any element. So if the architect does make changes, you don't have to worry about anything breaking. These families are just hosted in the model to basically the level they're on. So they don't really affect anything as far as when the architect makes changes, which is helpful. So now I want to use my selection box. So we'll select all these pieces right here. We'll hold control and select these two pieces of pipe. We'll go over to our 3D view and then use our selection box. Now you can see uh, these toilets and lavatories. And so, like I said, I'm gonna use my connect into commands heavily for, for this. So the first thing I want to connect is maybe the water. So let's do that. So I'm gonna connect the water down to this water closet and down to the lavatories and then to this uh, toilet here. So we use, click on our fixture, use connect into, and then we need to select the correct connector. So we want to select the water connection that's actually straight up and down. And so you can't really tell right here, but this one is straight up and down. We'll click OK, and then we'll click our main. And you can see that connection, in fact, does get made. Now, the connection or the size of the pipe is determined by the connector size. So right now, I believe I have this set to a half inch. So if you need to make this a three quarter inch, you can definitely do that. And what you could do is just change it on the toilet itself. So these families are very customizable. And you can see they are basically 
in the same location as the architect's fixture. And we'll talk about visibility later. But anyway, so if we wanna change the size of our water type, you can see I have all these parameters right here. So we have a cold water diameter parameter, so we could simply change that to three quarter inch, hit enter and hit okay. And now when I use the connect into command, so let's do it from a 3D view, we'll hit connect into, we'll make sure we select the connector that's going down into the fixture, we'll hit okay, and then we'll select our main. And then if we click on this piece, you can see it's three quarter inch. So it's all dependent on how you guys want to size uh, your piping and your systems. They're completely customizable. So anything you guys want, whether it be the elevation of the water connection or where the water connection is, you can move all those things. So for instance, if we want to make that water connection maybe on the other side of the toilet, we could definitely do that. So if I click on one of the toilets, I'm going to go to edit type again. And now you can see we have cold water offset. And I can make that, right now it's at eight inches, so let me actually go ahead and make it, I don't know, two feet and see what happens. We'll hit apply. And now you can see that the water connection is two feet away, but we actually want to make it on the other side of the fixture. So if ever you wanna do that, sometimes it you have to just go into the fixture itself. And these are very easy to work with. So if I go to my reference level, you can see the there's dimensions on here and it's very clean the way I did this. So hopefully it's not too, complicated but you see the cold water connection offset is from the center of this fixture but if we want to go on this side all we have to do is drag this uh, reference plane to the other side so we'll just drag it over and maybe we'll make it eight inches on this side so now it's on eight inches on this side and the the parameter value the cold water connection offset is still set so that we could change it in the model so let me load this back into the project we're going to overwrite the existing and the parameter value because we want to change it to over here and you can see that did in fact jump the placement of that offset. And I wanna bring it back to eight inches. So I click on my fixture again, hit edit type. And then I just need to make sure our cold water offset is set to eight inches. So they're very customizable for you guys to basically do anything you want. And since these are types, you can see it moved for both fixtures. Okay, so I'm actually gonna do undo, undo all of that because I don't want the connection over there. But I just thought I would show you guys how it can be done. So this is looking good. Let's connect our lavatories to our main up here. So again, we can do it from a 3D view or a floor plan. So first I'll do it from a floor plan to show you guys. So we'll click on our fixture, connect into, and then I just know that the cold water connection is right here. So I'm gonna click okay, click our main, and you can see that connection gets made. Let's do it from a 3D view. We'll select our fixture, connect into, we'll select the second water connector, and then we'll click our main and all that looks great. Now let's go ahead and size this water piping real quick. And if we click on this piece, you can see we do in fact have some flow associated with this pipe. Now it says 28 GPM, which seems very high. And that's because our calculators are using flush valve type fixtures. So we actually want to change that to make sure it's only using tank type. So let's go ahead and we're gonna select one piece of pipe. We're gonna go to the piping system and we wanna edit the type. Now I wanna make sure my flow conversion method is using tanks. And that's because we're gonna size this little system based on tank flow. So if I click this again, you can see now I only have 16 GPM, which is still very high, but we'll just use this as, a, as an example. So now I'm gonna go ahead and size all the piping, water piping from this point right here all the way to my fixtures. So again, I can use a crossing selection so we'll select all this right here and then what I can do is I can go up to the filter command and let's just deselect plumbing fixtures from this so we only have the pipes that looks great and then we could use our duct pipe sizing tool set it to eight feet per second calculated size only or maybe we will uh, match the connector size and we'll click OK and what that will do is it will resize this piece right here so we click on it now and you can see it went down to a one inch. So everything's looking great. But when I use match connector size, it actually uses the connector size for this portion too, even though it probably would have reduced it down to half inch. So that looks good. So everything's looking great guys. And basically what we do next is let's go ahead and connect the hot water so we can make a nice connection. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually zoom in for you guys a little bit. Make sure the thick lines is turned on. Or actually, let's change our scale back to 
maybe let's use an eighth of an inch so you can really see this in action. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this fixture right here. And you can see the main hot water line is all the way over here. So I'm actually going to utilize my connect into from that point. So I'm going to click connect into. This time I'm going to select my second hot water connector. Hit OK. And we're going to click on this hot water pipe right here. And you can see Revit makes that long connection all the way for us. So it's, it's really helpful. So that was great. And then let's go ahead and we'll work in a 3D view. And we can go ahead and use our connect into command in a 3D view. So we'll select the fixture, use connect into, select our second water, hot water connector. And then we've got to make sure we click on the hot water pipe right here. And you can see that connection gets made as well. So we're working really fast in Revit using our connect into commands. Now let's go ahead and do the sanitary and vent system. So this should also work pretty well. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our connect into commands. So I want to make the connection from this water closet down to the main. So we click on our fixture, connect into, we select the sanitary, we select our main, and boom, the connection gets made. Let's do that again for this side. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and wet vent this one into this pipe. So I want to show you guys how I would do that. So I'm not going to use the connect into this time, or maybe I can. So what do I mean by that? So let's go ahead and use connect in to, to get the connection to this main. So it draws the piping automatically for me, but then we're going to back it off and then connect it into here. So let me show you what I mean. We're going to use connect into, we're going to select the sanitary connector right here, or maybe we'll use the sanitary connector in the back that goes up and down. So that's this one right here. So I'm going to click OK, click our main, and then that connection gets made. So that's great. And now let's go ahead and we'll back our piping to a point about right here and we'll click on this piece and we'll hit the minus button to get rid of it. And then I want to go 45 degrees into this piece right here. So I can actually do this from a 3d view. I can right click here, draw a pipe and you can see, I can actually draw it at 135 degree angle right here. So that looks great. Now I could kind of line this up to make sure it looks good. That does look good. And I can use my TTR command or trim extend command up here. Click this, click this. And would you look at that? Now we have a nice little vet, wet vented system that looks pretty cool. So let's do it a little differently for this one. I'm this time I'm going to go uh, straight into the piece right here, or maybe we'll go straight down from our lavatory and we'll connect our water closet into that pipe. And I'll show you guys how that looks. So this time I'm going to go from our lavatory to our main. So we use connect into, make sure we use this sanitary connector in the back, click this piece right here. And then what we'll do is we'll click on this guy, and we're going to use our connect into again. We'll select the sanitary system that's going down, hit OK, and then we're going to select this piece. And would you look at that? The only problem with this is I need to make sure I upsize this pipe to whatever size this is. So you can see we're using a three inch pipe right there. So now I can click on this piece and we need to make sure we upsize this to three inches. And you can see now we have this. Now this guy, something's going on with it, so I need to make sure I also increase this whole thing to a three inch diameter piece, and that looks much better. So those are two little ways to wet vent this system, and that looks great. Let's go ahead and continue on with our vent piping, but before I do that, we need to connect our lavatories to this pipe right here. So we'll use our techniques that we talked about before. We'll drop this back, we'll click our fixture, we'll use connect into, We'll select this sanitary connector right here, click our piece, that gets drawn, and then I just want to make sure I back this piece down to maybe one foot six. So we'll type one foot six here, that looks good. We'll click on this, we'll click the plus, make sure we cap the open end here, that looks good. And then we'll continue to draw our vent piping. We can use the same technique that we used before, but let's do it in a 3D view so you can really see this in action. So I'll move this and we'll zoom in here. And I want to connect to this piece over here. So let's go from, let's go from this fixture first. So I'm going to click on this fixture, hit connect into, we're going to use our sanitary right here. That's pointing up, hit okay, which is actually the vent system, even though it says sanitary here, we're going to click on this and you can see that connection gets made. And now that I have this nice main here, I can just go ahead and use my connect into command, make sure I select the second sanitary and click it right here and boom. All that gets done right for me. Now I'm going to utilize some of the methods we were using before. I'm going to go ahead and make this a P-trap real quick. So we'll click on the smaller P-trap. And then I want to copy all of this piping 
over here to this location. So before I do that, I'm gonna back this down a little bit. Now I'll go ahead and select all of these pieces right here by using the little trick. So we'll select our T right here, and then we'll go to this one and we'll hit tab, click, and now all of these are selected. So we'll go into our floor plan view, and then maybe we'll copy from one of the points to the, to the next point. So let's use our copy command. Maybe we'll go from this point right here over to that point right there. That looks good. And now we can make the connection. So let's just go ahead and drag this up. Should be in the same spot. And we need to make sure that connection got made. So I'm actually wondering and curious if the connection gets made when you copy it to the same location. So let's go ahead and use our analyze tab, show disconnects for pipe. And you can see there is in fact no connection here. So you gotta be careful about that. When you're copying things over, sometimes the connection doesn't get made. So what we can do is we can click our pipe and make sure we back it down and put it back to this point. Another way to check to see if it was disconnected is to click on it and make sure there's fixture units flowing through it. You can see there's zero fixture units, so we know that pipe's not connected. So if I pull it back and then I pull it back to the spot and you see that X or that square, once I make that connection, the show disconnect goes away and now you can see the connection has been made and if we click on it, we can see there is in fact two or one fixture unit flowing through this pipe. So I just wanted to go over that. So let's turn off our disconnects and that looks good. And so now we completely uh, plumbed up this little uh, bathroom system two different ways using some wet vents. And uh, we're pretty much done, guys. We basically finished this model. Now, the last thing I wanna show you guys is kind of a cool trick. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually put all the showers in this location and we're gonna utilize our rotate command. Now, you would think, hey, I just wanna mirror all this stuff over here, but let me show you what happens when you mirror something. We're gonna mirror this, this stuff right here. So I'm gonna just use a window selection this time and maybe we'll select all of this stuff. We'll hold control and make sure we select our shower as well. And then let's go ahead and mirror it over and see what happens. So I'm gonna use the mirror command. So you can use two different types. There's one where you pick the axis and one where you draw the axis. I typically use the draw one. And then we're just gonna to go to a point, maybe the middle point right here, and we're just gonna draw it right there and see what happens. Now here's the issue. So let's go ahead and try to select all this stuff again and let's put it in the right spot, maybe something like that. Now you'll notice when we mirrored this fixture and mirrored this piping, we now have the piping on the wrong side. So our hot water is always on the left and cold water is always on the right. As you can see, we now have our cold water on the left and our hot water on the right. So that is not correct. So what we could do though, we could go ahead and select all of this stuff, make sure we get our fixture, and then we could mirror it again. And maybe this time we'd mirror at the pick axis button and we would pick an axis right through the middle of this shower, just like that. We need to make sure we're not copying. So let me undo that. We'll select previous, select everything here. And then we'll use, we'll try that again, mirror pick axis, make sure we're not copying the fixture and we'll go ahead and mirror it about that. And you can see now I'm back to having the cold water or the hot water on the left and the cold water on the right. So you could do it like that. That's not too bad. So, but I wanna show you guys another technique that I use. So let's go ahead and undo all of that stuff. So I'm gonna go hit the undo command until I go back to where we didn't have any mirrors going on. So that looks good. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna select everything here and we're gonna go ahead and just rotate it over into this location. So I'm gonna use a window selection, just like this, and click. We'll make sure we don't select these pieces, so we'll hold shift, so we don't want all that stuff selected. We'll hold control and we'll select this stuff right here, and then we'll go ahead and select that piece right there. Now I have all of this stuff connected, or selected, and we're gonna go ahead and rotate that all the way around to this location. Now, I don't think the tags will get rotated correctly, so we might have to delete those, but let's try it anyway. So we'll go to our rotate command, and this time we definitely want to copy it because I want to make a copy of all this stuff. So we'll hit the copy up here, and then I need to move my rotation point. So let's move it right to the middle where we did the original mirror. So it doesn't really matter exactly where, maybe right there. And let's go from this point right here, and let's rotate this whole thing 180 degrees over to this point right here. 
Now you can see that it's not perfect, but we might be able to work with this. So it looks like some of the tags came over, but some of them did not. So maybe we get rid of some of them. So let's go ahead and select everything. We could also use the tab command to select everything because everything is connected. I'm gonna click. And then I also wanna make sure I select my tags. So let's go ahead and hold control and select all of our tags here, just like that. And let's go ahead and move this into location. So we'll use the move command. We'll move from the back of this shower head to the back of this shower head right here. That looks great. And it looks like our water looks okay, but what we need to do is we probably need to move everything on this side. So maybe we can be a little strategic about this. Maybe I can mirror all the hot water and cold water piping over and then reconnect it. So let's do that. So I'm gonna delete all these little elbows and stuff. So let's just delete them all. So I'll select them. Maybe we'll select this point right here and then let's hit delete. And now all of those elbows have been deleted so we can go ahead and select all this piping now. So we can use our tab command and click and then use tab to select all this cold water. Now we can hit control to add to our selection. And then we'll also hold control and make sure we get these tags as well. Now we have all of our piping selected so we can use the mirror command. We'll use the mirror pick axis and then we don't want to copy this, so let's unco uncheck that. And then let's go right through the middle of this fixture right here and click. That's okay, we'll hit okay. And boom, would you look at that? We automatically rotate or mirrored this all over to this side. So now we can use our trim commands. So we use TR and we'll trim all of these together. Look at that, it's going pretty fast. And then let's trim our hot water together, just like that. And the last thing we might wanna do is modify which side we're connecting to. So we might wanna actually connect to this side. So if we wanna make that change, we'll just delete these pieces over here. We'll trim those together just like this. That looks good. And then we'll go ahead and extend the connections over here so we can zoom in to this point. Let's hit the plus, zoom into this point, hit the plus, and then continue drawing some piping off to this direction. Would you look at that? Right click, draw a pipe, and things seem to be going pretty smoothly. So this is looking great. Now, I definitely need to work on the sanitary because I'm, I'm not a big fan of what happened over here. So we need to kind of reroute all of this. So everything needs to be flowing maybe this direction and then going into the main right here. So I might have to just completely start over with this. So there's a couple things I could do. And the last technique I wanna show you guys is how to use the automatic routing commands when you know where your piping is going. So let's go ahead and do this in a 3D view. So I'm gonna drag this over and let's go into our showers. Now there's still uh, look like we have a good view of this stuff, but I want to get rid of this part. So I'm gonna use my light bulb and I'm going to move my section box over. And so we can just focus on the showers. That looks great. Let's click the light bulb again. And essentially I need to delete all of the sanitary piping. So I could do that by tabbing into all of it, just like this. And we'll go ahead and just delete it. And what I wanna do is we wanna start from the very beginning. We wanna select all of our fixtures first. So let's just select our shower fixtures. Now, one thing I didn't really explain yet is you can turn off the architect's fixtures while you're working after you've placed them. So the way to do that is we go to our visibility graphics. So view visibility graphics, go to our Revit links. And what we wanna do is we wanna actually turn off the architects fixtures. So that's why we go to Revit links and see the architectural model. We can change the display settings within that model. So I'm going to go up to model categories and you can see I can't change anything right now. But if I go to basics, if I change the, instead of by host view, I want to display the architect stuff custom. And then I'm gonna to go to model categories and now you can see I can select custom here and basically turn off the plumbing fixtures. So we'll go down to P, turn off the plumbing fixtures, hit apply, and you can see now the architect's fixtures have been turned off so it's a little easier to work. I'm gonna click okay. So that looks great. So now I'm gonna use, uh, I'm gonna select all of these plumbing fixtures. So I'm gonna just hold control and select all of them. They're just little showers. And we're gonna create a piping system. So we're gonna click on the piping button, and this time we wanna create the sanitary system. We'll hit okay. And it's going to find all the sanitary connectors associated with this uh, fixture. So we need to make sure we select the one that's going down. 
So this one right here, the second one. So we need to do that for each one. Select the second one, select the second one, and select the second one, just like that. And now we've essentially created a sanitary system for these shower heads. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to also use our generate layout command. So we're going to click it and we're going to make sure we set our sanitary main and branch to negative two feet. So let's go to our settings. Let's make it negative two. Go to the branch, set it to negative two, hit OK. And that looks great. And so the last thing I want to show you guys is how you can use Revit to place the base. And what the place the base tool does is it allows me to tell which way the piping is flowing. And if I place my base in this direction, the piping will automatically flow that way. So I'm going to click on the place base tool and then I can place it into this view. So we'll go into our floor plan view and maybe we want the piping to go off in this direction right here. We want it to go all the way to this point. So we'll click and now you can see the routing has changed a little bit, but that's, that's not a problem. I'll go back to my solutions. I forgot one thing. We need to modify the base a little bit and I do want this location, but I want to make sure I set the offset to negative two as well. And now you can see my piping's at the same level. So let's go ahead and go back to solutions and we can just cycle through the solutions again. So I'm going to click the arrow button over here and you can see this last one, five to five, this one's looking like it's going to work. So let's go ahead and finish the layout and that looks great. Now the piping was a little big. That's one thing I also forgot. So let's undo that. And what's cool about the generate layout command is even if you do it, when you undo, it goes back into this command. And what we need to do is we need to modify the base one more time. And you can see we accidentally had it set to six inches for the diameter. So let's change that to three inches. So we'll click into this, change it to three inches, hit enter. And then we go back to our solutions, go to our fifth solution. That looks good. And then we can finish it off. So boom, with one click, we basically created this whole layout. So that took a little bit of time, but once you guys get more familiar with using this command, I do believe it will save you some time. So now that we have our uh, piping all placed, we can basically uh, modify it if we want. So maybe I want to move the sanitary into the wall a little bit more so I can make that vent connection. So let's go ahead and make the vent connection. So anytime you're doing that, you want to go from the top down to the pipe. So we'll click this piece, we'll right click, create similar, and I'm going to go from the top to the bottom. And you can see that connection gets made automatically. We just need to make sure we're using the correct fittings here. This piece looks like it is a little big. Oh, so this piece is two inches and then this piece goes to three inches. So if we want to modify the whole thing, let's just select all of our pieces here and then just update it to three inches because we want that main to be three inches all the way. And then we can go ahead and continue this off and add our clean out. So I'm going to right click on this, draw a pipe. I'm going to hold shift and maybe uh, we'll put our clean out somewhere over here. So I'm gonna escape and I'm gonna go back to my floor plan view and maybe we can put the clean out in, in this little uh, stall right here. So it's out of the way of the showers, which looks kind of nice. So I actually, actually like this location right here. I'll right click, draw a pipe. We're gonna go up to zero. We're gonna hit apply. And then I'm gonna select the piece, cap the open end. And you can see my nice clean out symbol gets uh, put right there. And so everything's looking great. And now we just need to make sure we connect this uh, piece of pipe to the branch. Now, before when I was down here, I didn't want to say anything. I want you guys to let me know that something's wrong. But basically, you don't want to do any kind of crazy 90 degree turns, especially for a shower that could have hair and could clog. You really want a 45 degree and make, make a nice smooth transition. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll delete this elbow right here. Let's move our piping down a little bit. And then let's move this back a little bit. And let's go ahead and make a nice smooth transition. So we'll click on our piece, we'll right click, draw a pipe, and then we'll go 45 degrees. Now Revit's yelling at us, and I believe it's because there's not enough room for the fitting, okay? So anytime Revit's yelling at you, make sure you just extend your uh, piping as much as possible and kind of exaggerate things. So we're gonna draw a pipe at a 45 degree angle. And then what I can do is I can click on this piece and I can use my arrow keys and nudge this into until it breaks. Now, once it breaks, I just hit cancel. And now I know that this is the smallest piece I can use. Now I could just go ahead and move my sanitary over a little bit more like this. And then we could use our trim extend command. So TR, 
and trim that into that. And so now we have a nice smooth transition into our main. Let's do the same thing over here. So I wanna modify this location right here. Let's do it from a 3D view this time though. So what I wanna do is I wanna see it in a floor plan though as I'm working. So let's go ahead and let's keep it in the shower room. So we'll pull it back to that location. We'll right click. You'll notice that sometimes when you right click, you can't hit draw pipe, but you could use the create similar button and then you can go ahead and click into the pipe right here. And then I want to draw it at 45 degrees. So Revit will go ahead and do that for me, just like that. And then I can hold shift and make sure I'm drawing at 45 degrees this way, click. And then I can use my trim extend command, TTR, and we'll trim this into this. And you can see I did all of that in a 3D view and everything's looking great. So that's a nice, nice smooth transition into the main so we can avoid clogs whenever possible. So that looks great. And this uh, system is actually called a circuit vent and that's when you are venting all of these fixtures with one pipe and there are requirements for circuit vents. And I do talk about that in my plumbing 101 course. Uh, you guys can get it at mepguide.com. Hey guys, I'm just finishing up modeling and tagging everything and it's going pretty well, but I did notice something that I want to show you guys. You'll notice that the shower drain is actually set eight inches from this fixture. Now you can see there's a floor drain here in the architectural background. So we might want to move this shower drain over. And luckily with these fixtures, you can do that automatically. So what we need to do is we need to measure the distance from this back point to this floor drain. So let's hit the measure tool and then we'll go from the back of this fixture and we'll measure it to this floor drain. We'll copy this value to the clipboard, hit control C, and now I'm gonna go into this floor drain or shower fixture, hit edit type. You can see down here we have an on fixture sanitary depth offset. I'm gonna paste in that value and hit okay. And you're gonna see that the floor drain locations get moved for all of these shower fixtures. So that's kind of cool that we just did that automatically with one, one shot. So let's go ahead and first I need to move my clean out a little further back. So let me do that real quick. I'm just going to move it as close as I can get it right there. That looks good. And let's move over here to these shower drains because I was noticing there was a similar issue. So you're going to see that something's up with these as well. These for some reason need to go even further it looks like. So we might have to change or create a new type. So I'm going to do that. So first I'm just going to measure the distance. So from this point to this middle of the floor drain it looks like it's a little bit longer. So I'm going to copy that value to the clipboard and then I'm going to simply click on one of them, hit edit type, and I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this one. And then I'm going to paste in the value right here that I just got. And hopefully that should match. So you'll notice that it matched right here. Now I need to make sure I update the rest of these fixtures. So I'm actually going to click on them just like this. And now we're going to update them to that newly created shower three. That looks great. For some reason, the floor drain is not connected, but that's no problem. Let's use our connect into command and let's just click the sanitary and click our main right here. Get that all figured out. Now we need to create a new type mark tag. So luckily the tag is reading this, but we have not updated the type mark. So I need to make this SH-1. Now, anytime you make a type mark, that's the same. Revit's going to let you know that, hey, you're changing this and you have duplicate type marks, but that's okay because we know about it. So now you can see we have went ahead and quickly updated our sanitary and our shower locations. So uh, I wanted to show you guys that, and honestly, all of these fixtures have similar properties where you can move the connectors to anywhere you want them to. And so basically, I wanted to show you guys just the summary of what I did as far as the tagging goes. And I will explain all of the techniques that I use for these tags and how to get them to look like this, which is a very art to Revit. And I have a lot of cool techniques. And I also want to show you guys the different techniques for showing plumbing fixtures. Right now we have both the architect and our fixtures showing, but sometimes we want the architect's fixtures to show and sometimes we only want our fixtures to show. So there's a lot of different things we can do there. We can also, you know, I could quickly get rid of these leaders if I wanted to by using, by just removing the leader here. And then we could also just move the tag right to the drains to just make it more clear that since it's a sanitary view, we really only want to tag that drain. And so I could do the same thing over here where I could just quickly select all of these tags, get rid of the leader, and then I could just bring them down here to make it 
a little nicer for the sanitary and vent view. And so th that's that. And so let me go ahead and give you guys a preview of everything that I've created for this uh, project. So let's start at this 3D view over here. So you can see I have a nice 3D view that I've created and I'm basically uh, coloring all the piping white. And then you can see that the blue and red for the hot water and cold water systems are showing up. So everything in white is representing sanitary PVC. Everything in the white dashed is representing the vent piping. And um, everything in color obviously represents the domestic hot water and cold water. And so uh, this is just a really cool view. And it looks really nice in a shaded view. And you can see that we've plumbed up our little individual bathrooms, uh, two different wet venting styles right here. Let's continue on to P101, which is the main floor plan. And for this exercise, I actually have everything being displayed, all systems displayed in this one drawing floor plan. So there's a lot going on, but I just wanted to show you guys that it's possible. And so you can see everything looks pretty good here. Everything is very organized. I'm using different tags for different situations, depending on how I need to show them on this sheet. And then you can see I ran out of space here, but I wanted to keep this same scale. So I just went ahead and moved that section up here and you can see it. And again, we're using some different techniques here. So let's go ahead and check out the domestic water. So basically, once you tag everything, you can basically just turn off the sanitary and vent system. So that's what I did here. And you can see instead of using the fine level of detail, we're using a coarse or medium level of detail here. So we can see single lines and everything's looking really good. And I'll just uh, scroll over so you guys can see everything. Everything looks really clean and nice. Let's check out the P103, the sanitary and vent system, which you guys have already taken a look at. But I just want to go over this again in a floor plan view. You'll notice that I have some sections right here. And so I have some sections here as well. And basically those are actually um, sections that are on a sheet. So you can see right here, I've created some really cool sections. And this just basically gives more information. And it, they're really not that hard to set up. You'll notice that I need to modify these tags right here because I moved that sanitary piping so I can do that pretty quickly. Maybe I'm just going to double click into it and we can just select all of our tags right here and then we can maybe move them. Maybe we'll move them on this side. That looks pretty good. And let's just move this one a little closer so it's not running into this vent piping right here. So that looks pretty cool. Let's go ahead and move all of these over. So let's just move them over something like that. And then we can make adjustments with our arrow keys as well. Maybe we could delete this one and we'll create similar here. Maybe something like that. That looks great. And maybe we'll create similar, put a tag right here, get rid of the leader, just cleaning this up a bit. And then we have all of those tags over here. So we would need to adjust this. So I went ahead and fixed that real quick. I'm also going to make sure these tags are close to the sanitary connecting to the drains for the showers. So I'm going to use a technique that I show a lot. And since this is the same fixture, we can definitely just use the same tags. So that looks great. So, you know, these are some of the things I do. I show you guys how to, you know, accomplish things like showing a little access panel here and a little annotation right here. Um, you know, just tagging all of these using different techniques. There's no right answer, guys. I just wanted to show you all kinds of different methods that I like to use. We could do the same thing down over here. We can just move these guys into location. That looks good. And so I really like the ability to, you know, make these quick sections. So they really tell the contractor exactly how things are being stalled and uh, the sizes of all the pipes. So uh, here's the last two sections that I have. Let's continue on and take a look at the riser diagrams. So you can see here is a nice domestic water riser diagram showing the hot and cold water. And I'm using just a coarse level of detail. So I show a nice single line piping and everything's looking good. I'm using the architect's fixtures. And so I'm gonna actually show you guys the difference between using the architect's fixtures and using my own fixtures. So right now we are displaying the architects, but if I double click into this view, and then I have some view templates that I already preset. And basically this one's with the architectural fixtures on. I also have one with the MEP fixtures on so I can show you guys what that would look like. So you can see uh, the fixtures get a little darker 
and uh, they look more conducive to the ones we were using for modeling. So they're a little simplified. Uh, and so you guys can customize uh, these things even further if you want. But I do want to just show you the difference between using the architect's fixtures or even using your own for your uh, riser diagrams. So let's continue on and take a look at the sanitary and vent isometric. And in this view, we ran out of space because we were using a fine level of detail to really show everything. And so what I'm using is I'm using little tags right here. Um, they're just pieces of text. And you can do this a lot of different ways. I show a bunch of different techniques for this, but this is the water service room right here. We might want to put a label on that. And so the sanitary is going to this point and then picking up at this point right here. We're picking up all of our shower drains and then we're going into the water closets and the lavatories. And you can see they're all plumbed up in this view and you can clearly see how, how the system is coming together. There's no issues with that, and then the showers continue, and then we ran out of space again, so you can see there's an A2 and an A3, but that gets picked up down here, where we're hitting our individual uh, public restrooms down here, and you can see the wet vented system very clearly right there, so that looks great. So again, I want to show you guys what it would look like with the architect's fixtures on this time, so let's double click into this view, and I have again two uh, view templates. So this one shows the MEP fixtures on. Let's try with the architectural fixtures on. And you can see I've used a half tone and I've actually put them as underlay, which is really, really helpful to really see how these things get plumbed up. So I, I really like this view because it allows the architect's fixtures to shine through, but it doesn't overpower the drawing. So this is another technique that I'm going to show you guys. And uh, I just want to show you guys all the techniques so you guys can pick the right ones for your own drawings. All right, so that's about it. And then it ends at the section views where I just have the additional information on the section views where you can clearly see the pipe sizes and how everything is routed and put together from a section view. And so that is just a really handy uh, technique to get some more information on the plans that you could not fit in the floor plan or maybe in the isometric view. So that's it for um, this video. I hope you guys are really excited about getting these plumbing fixtures and uh, taking my course where we go into, you know, the construction documentation. I show you how guys how to do all this stuff. And also, uh, you know, you'll be able to use this template file for future projects. So that way you can model extremely fast and get everything done in record time and hopefully just make life a little easier on you guys. So that's it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed the course. I had a lot of fun creating this for you guys. And so I will continue making videos and please let me know in the comments what kind of videos you guys want me to make next. And I will make sure I make them and I will see you guys later. Make sure you go to mepguy.com and get your hands on all these plumbing fixtures in this template file. So I'll see you later. Bye, guys.